Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brew Built X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brew Built Conicals. You can trust Brew Built with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brew Built at morebeer.com. Today's Sunday session is brought to you thanks to the fine folks at More Beer. Visit them right now at morebeer.com. I poured it in my mouth and it just wasn't going down. My first beer was an IPA, the best IPA I've ever drank, mostly because I brewed it. If you have a scale that is good for measuring cocaine, you're probably good for measuring hops on cocaine. You're scaring me. <laughs> I think the information is awesome and the audio sucks. Take some sugary water, throw it, some yeast in there. And you're going to drink good beer. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good. good. It's fine. Oh, God. Damn it, man. Oh, my God. Live from the Brewing Network Studios in Northern California, this is the radio program for home brewers, craft brewers, beer lovers, and beer geeks. It's your only source for live beer radio that brings expert brewers together with well, expert drinkers. This is the radio program with a head on it. This is the session. Yeah, it is. Welcome to the session, ladies and gentlemen. Thank My you. My name's Justin Crosley. I'm your host this afternoon. For two times in a row now. That's right. <laughs> Don't call it a comeback. No, I won't. He's been here for hours. <laughs> That's right. I have been here for hours, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Uh, all right, we got a great show planned for you today, and uh, still recovering a little bit from our highly successful Spring Brews Festival oh. mm-hmm. here Very in uh, Toto Santos. I'm still um, broken. Uh, Bebo's still, <laughs> still hurting. Bebo worked hard. She had a lot to do this year. Uh, Chad, you know, used to be our uh, kind of beer coordinator, right. and then I had a separate fest coordinator. Well, when Chad up and moved to Texas, I gave both of those jobs to <laughs> So she had a work she had a work cut out for it. She did a stellar job. We had one of the best Yay. beer lineups mm-hmm. we've ever had. Um, uh, brewers were uh, very gracious as always. However, somewhat difficult in, in the beginning, just because we moved the festival and and we changed the date three times because of SF Beer Week, all that stuff. So despite that, you know, having to track people down, Bebo, you really killed it. It did a good job. Thank you. Uh, so we had a good fest and uh, tasty. The the tasting room tasty's tasty room looked fantastic as usual it was always a big uh all right a big hit there for sure i saw a line all like day a huge yeah. line four wide yeah. the longest line but four wide <laughs> <laughs> i love it every year yeah i don't i ask i go to line in the line go like well, what, are you, what are you in this line like, they go like well they got beers i never had before right well, like, okay because you'll never get them again so they, yeah that's true but that's the fun part about it i guess it is yeah so that was cool I to guess, see. I guess it is. <laughs> guess I don't understand so. it. I didn't get are in that line. Are you calling them suckers? I don't think, I, 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 don't think, I, don't think I had one pour on any homebrew all day. Oh, you didn't? Well, no, because I'm going to go out and talk to the brewers and shit. Oh, everybody's okay. there. I thought a lot of times you do stay right there. I usually so. do, but... Not this time, huh? It's like, uh, it's like hanging out with your ex-girlfriends or right. going out into the sick bar at Singles Night yeah. for Tasty. It's like, I can hang out with the homebrewers, but it's the pro brewers. Yeah, got to go well, do I'd that. Well, i go back and check the line and make sure that they're... You know, they're Everything's it was, line, it was, was long because they have a lot of... Interest on because we're pouring slow. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, the line looked long all day long, and yeah. uh, like I said, we had a stellar pro brew lineup oh as God, usual. Yeah, yeah. In fact, our guest tonight is one of the brewers that came all the way up from Los Angeles to do the festival and stuck around to do the show today. We've got Eagle Rock Brewing Company out of Los Angeles on the program, so uh, I'm excited about that. We've been fans of their beer for oh, yeah. a long time. No, I'm stoked. Yep. Yeah. yeah, cool to finally have them up here. We always try to do that with the with the festivals. Get somebody for, who, who's coming up from out of town. Um, 
But yeah, uh, man, so many other good breweries. Um, Cellar Maker made it out. They thought they wouldn't. Right. Uh, they don't have a lot of beer to send to other places, and they made an exception for us, just like a lot of people did. Beachwood Barbecue sent beer up, yeah. and actually, uh, they, they couldn't come up to pour it, and they sent it up with the Society guys, which, by the way, Society's always my go-to tent. I must, I, I probably only tried five or six yeah. different beers all day, totally. <laughs> yet I went to Society at least five times. <laughs> yeah, to just get the same. Agreed. Um, yeah. Did you try the three Weavers beers? They were on the other side of the... You know, I line. didn't, and I was so excited that they were here. It just was a busy day. I was running back and forth, but I was so happy that they came up. Yeah. How'd you like them? They're really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the Kolsch was awesome. It was good. I like trying Kolsch's. Yeah. Yeah, there were, I think, four at the fest. Okay. Yeah. So, and we got the uh, brewers from, uh, like, Sacramento area. Uh, Moraz Brewing came over. They're, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and Dave uh, Marley, what's his name? Yeah, from Flat Tail. Tail. Yeah, Flat Tail. Yeah. He was pouring some cool stuff. I actually only went to the Flat Tail booth. Yeah. The whole, because it was right by where I had to stand <laughs> well, that, all day. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. yep, fill me up. Let's go back. There, yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the nearest good beer. Yeah, I went there a couple of times. Um, and so the Beachwood beer, Julian was kind enough to send it up with the Society guys. And then uh, none of us figured out who was supposed to pour it and i didn't realize <laughs> i didn't realize that until oh, the no. end yeah. okay but so what is bad news for the festival goers is good news for the hop grenade because i just called julian down at beachwood and said hey we screwed up you're so kind to send your beer i'm now going to purchase your beer you don't have to donate it to the cause and we're going to serve it here at the hop grenade I- so we'll have some beachwood beer on at the hop grenade uh probably later this week maybe the weekend um and yeah so sorry to the fest goers but uh, lucky us yeah lucky us right. uh that probably was our only beer screw up um i think everything else went really well and uh, I was really happy with it. Good turnout. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the weather was much better than the original date, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I was feeling s- like such a dunce for having to move the date around. Even It wasn't my fault. It was that SF Beer Week fiasco. But I, I still, you know, I always wait to see how it turns out. I felt so validated because both of the two dates in January that I I tried to move it to were pouring with rain. And yesterday, or Saturday, rather, we had 75-degree weather. No rain at all. Um, got sunburned. I got sunburned by 10 a.m., actually. <laughs> I just wandered around the park, setting everything up. By 10, my face was on fire. <laughs> so that sucked. Somehow, um, I didn't get burned, and I didn't put sunscreen on. You didn't? No. I'm surprised you ever even leave your house no, without no, sunscreen. No, Warren, the people next to you got sunburned. Oh, you're just <laughs> bouncing off. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of uh, brown spots in the grass. It just stood still too long. I've had years of practicing lurking in the shadows, so I avoid direct sunlight. If at all possible. Yeah. Good call. It makes sense. Yeah. You and Donald Trump. You and all your ancestors. <laughs> right. Yeah, I had to steal one of the Brewing Network hats by like 10 a.m. Uh, when we were selling at the merch booth just to protect myself the rest of the day. But uh, I'm really happy with it. And we raised a whole bunch of money for the downtown Concord, the TSBA Arts Foundation, which puts on the free summer <laughs> music program here in the park. Just brings in customers over here. Smart move. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there's obviously that um, because it's part of the, the downtown center well, that we're in. But I also really like supporting music, and I know that their music program has kind of been in trouble, which is weird to me because the park is full with like 3,000 people or more every Thursday night in the summer, but it's all paid for by donations, and people just don't really pony up that much. They love to come sit there and get the free concert. (laughs) Um, So I'm really stoked. We are probably handing them a a bigger check than they've ever gotten, and I think that that's going to go a long way to support the music here. And so I'm I'm really excited about that. That's good for all your neighbors here, too, that have a business as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, not that they do anything for me, but I'm happy to <laughs> I'm happy to be the one doing everything for everybody. That's I right. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> You're the god. Yeah. You know, yeah. rich Uncle Justin. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Here's a twenty, kid. Get here's, yourself a candy. Yeah, here, kid. Yeah. Go buy me a burrito. <laughs> See. Get the uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, the whole thing was really good, um, and I'm excited about that. And then, uh, well, as I'll get to in our announcements here, uh, it's now BNA eleven time. Oh, already. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? Where's that shotgun sound bite? Oh, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we used to have it pretty dialed in with a, a six-month 
uh, interval. With, oh, we, you know, right, we, yeah, we, right. we would do the beer fest here in January, yep. and then our next giant event was always in June. And so with the moving of the beer fest, <laughs> we, we are now a little over, and I mean a hair over, two months away yeah. from... Uh, Headed to Baltimore for the homebrew conference and BNA 11. Yeah. We do not have a venue. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a logo. I mean, uh. so instantly this week, it, it, we're just moving to the next event. Can I hand draw the logo? Just, I mean, because it's going <laughs> to yeah. suck either way. It's going to be rushed. We might as well it's just, so rush. <laughs> yeah, like an MS Paint thing. I'll tell you what. You do that, okay. but I'm going to go back to my guy who did the Spring Fest stuff. He tends <laughs> to turn that stuff around quick okay. and see if I can get something done. No, and, good. and then I'll compare the too. Yeah, oh yeah, and see what happens. Um, That'd be fine. Blobber Gloss yeah, is he, also offering to draw our logo. Oh, I defer so to him. Yeah, he's an MS Paint wizard. Yeah. yeah. All right, oh. well, let's do, have him draw. Have him start drawing. So we need it this week. Here's a question I got from a lot of people. Are we now going to move the fest date mm-hmm. to April yeah. instead of in January? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know is the honest answer. Um, there, There's one hard part about it, and that is that the Martinez beer festival Mm -hmm. is in two weeks which by the way you should go to it's a great festival called the bay area craft beer festival held in in my hometown now it's my hometown i've been living there long enough um and it theirs has always been in april and the 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 person who runs it is such a wonderful woman her name is leanne and uh, remember beer pal uh, it's beer pal's wife she's such a wonderful woman and she was also a helped champion out. For us. She did our whole front gate and volunteer coordinating at my festival, despite the fact that I <laughs> am encroaching on her territory. Um, so I don't want to do that to her. I did it okay. by accident. I had I had not. You know, I tried to. There's no. No. There's no beer calendar. Yeah, there's no one mm-hmm. entity that is in charge of organizing all the beer events in the beer. Yeah, which yeah. is an issue. I mean, someone needs to get on that. And maybe, maybe you can make some money. Um, and, and so I need that. And so anyway, I looked everywhere I could and just, you know, I just forgot that Leanne does hers in April. Yeah. So I would honestly, I'd kind of like to move to April, but I, I got to talk to her and, and see what happens. Maybe March. Maybe March. Yeah. Here's what it is. You know, we've lucked out in January. I, I've always really liked our January fest mm-hmm. and, and I would like to keep it there. But I am terrified that one of these days the weather is just going to catch up with me. It will. It'll rain. (laughs) Right. For sure. Whenever the drought ends. And here's the problem. I'll just tell folks at home how this stuff works. You know, you put out a whole bunch of money to put these festivals on. You know, we're talking 30 grand, sometimes more. Right. And people don't really buy tickets until the week of the event mm-hmm. uh, for various reasons. A lot of them are like me. They just procrastinate. They don't forget. have to, you know. Right. But I do think that one of those other reasons is the weather. They wait to see because it's sure. an outdoor fest. Mm-hmm. So by the week of, I've barely, you know, I, I do ticket sales for over a month. But by the, you know, the Monday before the event, I've barely broken even. So I rely on the week of sales. Yeah. And so here's what terrifies me about the weather is if you look at that five-day forecast on Monday <laughs> and it's January and it's going to be, you know, 40 degrees outside and raining, yeah. people aren't going to buy tickets that week. No. I'm screwed. Yeah. I, I mean, it'll be a very difficult thing to do. Uh, and and it's all the, the nonprofits, you know, cash anyway. But we, of course, get, get paid a fee for promoting and all that. Mm-hmm. But if there's no money, there, there's no fee. Right. So I don't know what to do. I feel like we've lucked out with 70-degree weather for the last three years. Right, in January. I feel like yeah. SF Beer Week actually did me a favor by, you know, accidentally that I moved it this year because this is the year it would have gotten me. So what's oh, going to sure. happen next year? Is am, Did I just push fate? or a, It's a hard decision to make. I don't know what to do. Can yeah. you find an indoor space? I don't want an indoor space. No, I, this is our thing. It's got to be in that park. Okay. Like, that's it's part of the brand. It's why the brewers love it. I mean, everyone loves it there. So, I mean, I can, yeah, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I really don't. I, I, my brain's just still barely functioning from yeah, getting it. But today. I do need to figure it out, and yeah. I'm going to talk to Leanne, and, and, and we'll see what's up. In the meantime, I do recommend that you go to BayAreaCraftBeerFestival.com if you're local and go to that fest. You're going to see a lot of great breweries there. The Brewing Network will be set up there. The Hop Grenade will be set up there. And it's another we'll, just... We'll be part of homebrew again. You got another homebrew tent. That's perfect. They run a shuttle from North Concord Bart straight yeah. to the festival, so it's easy to get to. And, um, yeah, go support them, too. That's another great cause.
All right. Our show today is brought to you today by our wonderful sponsor, More Beer. You go to morebeer.com right now and check it out. I went and saw their new facility in... Yeah. In Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh with Pittsburgh, no... Pittsburgh, California. Yeah. yeah. How was it? Uh, it kind of blew my mind. I, all I kept thinking was that they're like the Amazon of, of homebrew. I mean, the sheer size of this warehouse. I stood there looking down the racks that are like a quarter mile long. I mean, I'm wow. looking at Darren and Chris Graham and wondering why they don't have segways to get around this warehouse. It's yeah. enormous. They should. A skateboard, a scooter or something. Something. All of their West Coast distribution and their product development and all that is now housed in this warehouse. The Concord okay. showroom is now just that. It's just a showroom. And looking at this warehouse and how much product they have for you now, I, all I could think, and, and Darren, one of the partners, said the same thing when I said to him, I, I said, how did you even fit into the Concord looking at this place? Yeah. And he said, I, I have no idea. I can't even tell. It's, it's like putting a, a square peg into a round hole when you see the difference between the two. Oh, for sure. But now they have room to develop more products. Darren's got his, his, a bigger metal shop to, you know, with the sculptures and the conicals and to grow oh, there. Everything is, is separated into its own departments, uh, so they're not all on top of each other anymore. And they've got room to carry more product for you. So now they have that as a distribution center on the West Coast. They've got their East Coast distribution center, which isn't quite as big, but I'm told it's also enormous. And they're killing it, uh, getting out your shipments really fast. So it was cool to see. So go to morebeer.com right now. You're going to get fresh stuff no matter which coast you're on, and you're going to get it really fast. Like one simple thing uh, that I noticed them doing is just being able to pre-assemble boxes. Yes. It seems silly, right? Uh, but when you're processing a bunch of orders a day and you have to tape up a box and you're taping up I don't know how many of those boxes as you do the orders, just being able to pre-assemble that, say on a weekend, the weekend shift, yeah. you can just put out orders that much faster. And it, so it's just simple stuff like that. It really is. A, boxes are a huge problem, especially in uh, the homebrew shop world, mm -hmm. right? Because you'll have – you'll say, you know, some asshole will order a bucket – and a racking cane. That doesn't fit in a box <laughs> right. very well. And so then you have to figure out what box it fits into. Or they'll, they'll order, uh, you know, six jars of extract and a racking cane. Yeah. Well, you got to pack it. You have to, so you have to sit, and 10 minutes of your time is spent trying to figure out what box <laughs> goes into what. And so we had spent weeks trying to figure out what sizes of boxes do what. And that's what Darren's really good at, the analytical kind of stuff, where okay. he just he, the, touch it tactile, like I need to measure stuff and figure out that kind of thing. And so eventually we had special sizes. Yeah. You know, this is a racking cane box, and it fits jars of malt and this is how you pay and it's a lot of forethought goes into how you package stuff yeah uh, so yeah pre-assembly saves a bunch of time because that's what you know five to ten minutes from each order yeah is building a box which by the way Built is, up is, over, is over a day that you brought five, probably five orders you're, and uh, or more. over a year yeah. you're talking about man, so many man hours so yeah. even that and by the way amazon who i'm comparing them to is not that good at the packaging side i mean i love me some amazon <laughs> don't get me wrong but i hate it when i order two things and i get the box the size of a coffin yeah you get the <laughs> giant box but that to them is cheaper i guess yeah. in 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 right. labor and because you buy you know, they probably have, I don't know, five different sizes of boxes. Yeah. And everything has to fit in there. Or you just go to the next box and put some bubble wrap in to, to fill up the dead space. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Well, Economies of scale. And they have robots doing it. Yes. So just have a robot do one box <laughs> versus have a human figure out what size everything yeah, is. Right. Be. Well, that said, we did make an Amazon improvement uh, this week. Uh, I don't know how I found time to do this, but, you know, our U.K. and uh, Canadian friends can now support the Brewing Network also by shopping on Amazon, just like our U.S. listeners always oh, could cool. do. Oh, cool. Well, awesome. So now when you click on the Amazon link on our homepage, it'll take you to uh, three separate banners. They're oh. very clearly labeled. One says uh, Amazon USA, one says Amazon U.K., and one says Amazon Canada. And it works the same way. You can go do all your Amazon shopping, and when you do, uh, we get a little piece of the action. And it's a great way to support us because you don't spend any more money than you were going to do. Yeah. Uh, and Amazon's just such a – I do love me some Amazon. The packaging's a little funny, but I do <laughs> – the ease of use, I just can't – I can't give it up. I, I go there first. Oh, man. I, I try something. I'll Google something. 
always comes up Amazon. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I just started even using the Amazon app half the time. I, I've even bypassed Google uh, if I'm if I'm Well, when I, do, when I do find out on Google, I, don't, I go back to the Bring Network to do uh, to look at the item. Because if uh, I click through Google, yeah, they're getting the dough. You're right. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. So uh, a lot of people save it in their in their history so that you don't even have to go to our homepage if you don't want to. And you can just, that that's your permanent Amazon link in your browser. And I would love it if you did that. Like I said, it doesn't really cost you any more money at all. Um, and it helps us out. So uh, we are only able to sign up um, Amazon UK and Amazon Canada. So if there's like Amazon Africa or something, I'm sorry, I haven't figured <laughs> oh, that out. Dot, dot our buddies down in Australia and New Zealand would love it. They would love it too, right? Yeah. I have not figured it out they yet. Could buy I their grain fathers. I don't know. We yeah. don't take their prison money. <laughs> That's right. When we do, I'll, I'll do that. But so far, we're UK and Canada. So please, uh, that's a great way to support us. Um, all right. So what do I got for you here? This, I guess I'm already kind of into the announcements anyway. But BNA 11, I do know this. Uh, it, will be, <laughs> it will be in Baltimore. Uh, uh, will it be to, happening? It yeah. will be on Wednesday, June 8th. Um, it's always the Wednesday before. And it will be smaller than our previous years, okay? I think that we're only looking for a capacity of somewhere around five to 600 people in Baltimore. So those of you who, you know, wait and always know that you can get a ticket to BNA, that will not be the case this right. year. It, and if uh, sales uh, of tickets over the last several years are any indication, it will sell out at five to 600 people. So as soon as I have a, a venue, um, you know, I'll have ticket information <laughs> for you and all that. Um, the BN Army, those of you who donate into the BN Army regularly, uh, the subscription people, uh, you will get first dibs. As always, we will send you out an email before anybody else and give you the option to purchase those tickets. So if you're concerned about getting into BNA 11, because we're shrinking it this year, I would sign up as a recurring donor in the BN Army by hitting the donate button, and then you're sure to get our monthly newsletter and all the secret emails we send when we do ticket sales like this. So it will be happening. I'm going to go out there and look at some locations and um, we'll figure this thing out. <laughs> and I'll tell you when we're going to put sales <laughs> tickets on. Just saw Blobber's picture oh, yeah. of BNA 11. Yeah, let me see. It's already. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Two penises it's two behind. Two penises B- making the number making 11. The 11? Oh. That's pretty good. I really I, like it. I, I do. Those are good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, so stay tuned. Become a, a, a donor in the Army, and that's how you'll get the, the fastest, most up-to-date information. Um, Moscow has his Hoplife gear for sale. I think you go to hoplifegear.com and check it out. You can get some uh, cool original art, little hot people on T-shirts and prints and things like that. Um, get all these updates and more over on Twitter and Facebook. Send your feedback to feedback at thebrewingnetwork.com. Send your show ideas to Bevo at thebrewingnetwork.com. That's B-E-E-V-O at thebrewingnetwork.com. Send everything else to JP. Or Beardy. Right. Beardy doesn't even have a Ignore the bounce back email that you're going to get. Yeah. Just ignore that. It went through. It went through. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, All right. Do we have a Twitter game today? Yes, we do. Oh, that's great. Your Twitter game is (laughs) brought to you today by the Wine and Hop Shop. Yeah. You can go to wineandhop.com right now. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years. Great friendly service. uh, And half the staff has brewed professionally, so they know what they're doing. Uh, But here's the good stuff. If you use coupon code uh, BNSHIPPING in the notes field of the shopping cart, um, you'll get $8 flat rate shipping on orders under 50 pounds. So that's pretty good. Uh, use coupon code BN shipping. Most items ship within 24 hours, and it's the only place to get Wisconsin hop exchanged Gorse Valley hops, which are grown in Wisconsin. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty cool for them. Uh, all AHA and local homebrew club members get a 10% discount, over 100 varieties of hops, 100 varieties of yeast, 75 types of malt, all fresh stuff, uh, 15 varieties of hop rhizomes, and that's coming up soon. It's, uh, yeah. it's yeah. rhizome season it's, again, isn't it's it? It's coming around. August, I think, is when we plant. Okay. No, no, no. The no? rhizomes are coming out right I think now. Oh, really? coming out now. They're in stores right now. That's yeah. why mine never grow, I guess. Yeah, yeah, too late planting. Yeah, so get checked uh, or, or get checked. Uh, check your local. Get checked. <laughs> check <laughs> wine and hop shop. And then go get checked. And then go get checked. Yeah. Yeah. Testicular really... cancer is no joke. <laughs> uh, go to wineandhop.com and they bring you this Twitter game. What's our Twitter game today, JP? Uh, well, you know, in the, uh, uh, the forecast for uh, the financial, uh, you know, 
places in the world of the things and stuff. Yeah, you know them. all that kind of stuff. Them, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know, saying we're we're about to have another financial crisis, a worldwide mm. kind of shakedown of everything. Great. So, oh I, shit, we are. Yeah, you didn't uh, know that. No, you are dumb shit. I didn't know so I think it's time for the Brewing Network to diversify, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's about time to open our very first being fondue restaurant. Oh, yeah, because I think fondue is really up and coming. Okay. Um, and I think we're up and coming, sort of. Um, so anyway, I want everyone to start making up names for the dishes in our BN Fondue restaurant. For the dishes of BN Fondue. Yeah. Okay. I like it. That's a great, it's a random way to diversify, but I, I could see it working. Well, you know, look, I'm a trendsetter. I don't know if you knew that about me. Understood. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, how about we do some feedback? Let's do it. All right. Feedback's brought to you today by our good friend John over at the Beer Law Center. You can go to beerlawcenter.com right now and check it out. And uh, he helps us with our trademark, as you know, if you listen to this program. And boy, does he protect, protect that hop grenade. He does a great job. He can protect yours, too. And uh, Oh, boy, does he oh, ever. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He's uh, like a pit bull with that. Uh, <laughs> like the rapper? Well, he's like a friendly one, though. He, actually, what I really like about him is that he doesn't just send lawyers speak. He He speaks more like my voice, which is usually something like... Look, guys, this was probably an accident. I know we're all in the same industry. If you can do me a solid. And I mean, these aren't exactly his words, but he's a little cooler <laughs> yeah. about it, right? Yo, cat. Like, I've seen out. some <laughs> cease and desist that are terrible. And John's yeah. like somewhere in between. Like, he's enough to let you know that he's a lawyer, but he's not trying to be a dick to your fellow brewers who maybe accidentally, you know, stole your beer name or, or, or your logo or something like that. So yeah, for he, sure. he kind of knows the industry. Um, so go check him out over at beerlawcenter.com. He could do the same thing for you. Or he could help you get your brewery started, too. He does the paperwork and all that shit you don't want to do check them out all right darren from beach fire brewing writes in uh it's about the jp development yeah which, uh, <laughs> i didn't know there was one oh. neither did i apparently <laughs> he says hi guys i just want to give some quick feedback on jp's development as a host uh while justin was recently away seemingly trying to woo back daniela in some sort of creepy polygamous relationship with kate <laughs> <laughs> i don't think there's anything creepy about it no <laughs> seemingly <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, all right. Uh, during the times when JP, <laughs> uh, when JP had to fill in for Justin a year or two ago, uh, he did a pretty good job, but it was a bit awkward. Like Ed McMahon trying to fill in for Johnny Carson. Wow, big shoes for both of us, I think. I uh, however, this time I was really impressed. I'd say he's as good as Justin even. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I think the difference may be that JP had his own Ed McMahon this time in the form of Beardy. Whoa. Um, unfortunately, that role uh, took the uh, award for awkward during the Twitter game and <laughs> and the show ending credit. <laughs> You're great for unscripted support, Beardy, but not so much with reading aloud, he says. <laughs> the next time he's going to do it perfect. Come on. <laughs> yeah. like, let it, can he do it today? Yeah. I thought, I thought no. Beardy did fine. Beardy doesn't want to. The third time. The last time. The first time was hard, and it got oh, yeah. progressively better. So. No, no. If the, if, yeah. the, if the third time was the best one, no. yeah. that's the only one I heard. It was horrible. <laughs> It was the worst right. ending I'd ever heard. I didn't say it was great. It got better. No, better. Yeah. yeah. You're just lucky you didn't hear the first two. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. 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 Uh, but it, like JP, you know, yeah. a couple years ago, give Beardy a couple years, and I'm sure he'll be able to He's read good. aloud. I'll, I'll learn how to read, and everything yeah. will be fine. Yeah. We'll go to the Kumon Learning Center up there. <laughs> right. It'll be great. Uh, he says, I used to worry that Justin would leave for good and the show would start to suck more. But <laughs> as long as JP is there to take the helm, I'm not worried. Good succession planning, Justin. I did not write this email. Uh, wow, they're yeah. just greasing the door for wow. you to leave. All right, I admit I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the email. It's yeah, so that too you... good to be true. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, on another topic, I started listening uh, since the start, and I'm now in the process of starting my own brewery. It's scheduled to open this summer. Huh? If it wasn't for you guys providing so much information, and inspiration, uh, I wouldn't be quitting a perfectly good job uh, and going into huge debt and yeah. ruining a good hobby. You're so, welcome. He says, so thanks, I guess. Yeah, if it goes, if it goes well, send us a few bucks. Yeah. There you go. You yeah. can become a sponsor. He's opening, a, if if he says he's from Campbell River, uh, British Columbia, and we'd love to help you promote that, Darren. Yeah, we'll send some customers in. There yeah. you go. We're big in Canada. It's our second largest uh, listenership. Oh, oh, oh wow! Well, I thought it was Australia. Yeah, uh, they go back and forth. But okay. I just looked oh, at it last ahead. week, and uh, Canada's on top. Actually, cool. Australia is now fourth um, right now. They mm. they haven't been downloading as much recently. I guess they must not like JP as much yeah. as the That's Canadians. That's probably what it is. There goes the rating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. shit. They're, I can't uh, blame them. Yeah, they're fourth. The UK took third. Oh. So Canada's okay. second. The UK's in third. And, uh, I've always uh, liked the UK better than Australia. So. Well, there you go. Nice. 
All right, Dano writes in. I've been to both so many times. <laughs> right. This is about cloudy East Coast IPAs, you said. Ahoy, brewcasters. While I agree that we don't need another category of IPAs to mull over, uh, the reason Vermont juicy IPAs are cloudy is due to hop haze from massive Whirlpool dry hop additions, not yeast. No. If Jip and Beardy want to rag on them, fair enough. Just quit spouting bullshit as it makes you look decidedly chodish. Well, at the, uh, uh, at the risk of being decidedly Chodish. Chodish. Yeah. 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 Uh, when I pour out a can of Heady Topper and I decant it, then I, then I go pour the rest, I get yeast. Yeah, you do. Right. That's not phenols. Phenols don't dissolve. They don't settle. They're just in suspension. Okay. So what, what's the, what is that? All right. So there you go. Yeah, that's what I say. I mean, these, these right back. like Heady Topper, you know, you just, you go, what, 35% oats, all your hops in the whirlpool, no boil hops at all, do a short boil for protein uh, hot break, and there you go, Heady Topper. Big fucking deal. Did JP no, they, and my question is, did you guys say the haze was from yeast? Yes, but well, there's well, a difference well, between haze and cloudy gravy IPAs, yeah. which is what I'm calling like the ones. I don't want to name any names, but like the ones that look like a friggin' White Labs pitchable vial of yeast. Yeah, okay, that's a very different thing. Haze, yes, it's it's a lot of it is probably. I mean, people are putting in uh, oats. In these beers now for a creamier mouthfeel and calling it GMC, which is like the world's worst descriptor for a beer <laughs> it's ever. It's pretty bad. Well, they're yeah. not making them right. It really it is all about over over hopping. Yeah, it's it's while the there's an active scene. ferment. Yeah, and it gets all these polyphenols in suspension. Yeah, whirlpool the, hops. It it churns up the. Well, no, I'm talking about on the, the cold hops. side. Uh, Even dry hopping. You're talking dry hopping, hopping yeah. during fermentation. During, during active fermentation, <laughs> the heady like for instance the heady topper yeast. It's a it's a like a, a low flocker. Right. But I you know I've used it. And it's just slightly, you know, it's, they do other things, you know. Well, and I'm not, I would, I would call Hetty Topper hazy. I'm not even calling that no, gravy. No, like, yeah, this well, is right. like where it looks like or, straight orange well, juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is yeah. not, that is not. Uh, that, that, oat, might in, that might include some yeast. That's, yeah, right. that's not oat protein. That'll all drop out if you put it in the fridge forever. That's yeasty garbage. I don't know. I think it looks, I think it looks gross. And I'm going to say that it's not just all from hops. Okay. Sorry. It's just not. And I'm, I guess I'm a chode. I, yeah. I agree with you Quite on the juicy sure. descriptor, yeah. too. Yeah. That's even yeah. worse. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. good yeah. when yeah. it was on the ass of a little pair of shorts. <laughs> yeah. It's not it good for beer. Yeah. Yeah. But they're fake rhinestones. Yeah. Look. <laughs> I'm doubling down on that. Uh, write us again. Make it even even weirder. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, I'd say send us some, but it won't travel well. So. Right. I think the shelf stability thing is my biggest issue. Besides it looking it looking gross, Yeah. it's just all of that those phenols. And some re- yeast is still in there. And so all oh. of that. Yeah. Reduces the shelf stability, well, people, so it's not going to well, travel outside of the state. Even if you take it home a week later, it's going to taste worse than what it did right out of the ferment. Yeah. Well, there are folks on on you know hobbyists, oddly enough, who are right. into beer, are looking at these beers under microscopes and doing yeast counts. <laughs> right. It's yeast, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I, you know, I know you want to believe your favorite brewery's marketing, but it's it's well, it's, it's a, I'm not saying it doesn't have anything to do with hops or the 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 forty percent oats right. and that you don't. So basically, you make all the errors that you want in brewing. And 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 then that's how you get these uh, these beers. Well, I don't know. Done right, they don't have yeast in them. Right. And if there is a, 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 another style that's yeast and not uh, polyphenols, mm-hmm. then that's like I said, just it's, you know something that has to be. Well, I know, like, I know like the cellar maker beers that are poured here. Yeah. Uh, that are hazy and mm. most are like really really good. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they ask the guys like when they, you pour the first pint, is it like really 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 cloudy? He goes no, same as all the rest. Hmm. How about the last pint? No. Same. Same. Well, again, there's so a difference between haze. Yeast, yeast would be like, yeah. you know, you know, that's what you've done, Bruce. But, I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's a difference between haze there's absolutely and, a difference. And, and the gravy. And exactly. so when, when, two when, different I, beers. when you rail on cloudy IPAs, well, that's that's one thing or another. But it, we, let's get specific. I'm talking <laughs> if it looks like orange juice, looks like <laughs> gravy boat, yeah, where right, like gravy. you're mistakenly right. reaching <laughs> for it at Thanksgiving, yeah. then that's that's the beer I'm talking about. But hazy is in itself another thing that I don't like. But right. let's no. keep the two things I don't like separate. Not, I don't have any any basis, but, but what about potentially you can get enough polyphenols in that it looks that way? I mean, because mm-hmm. the beers that they're pouring here that poured the same way all day were pretty, yeah. pretty cloudy. Not like, well, if you took a picture of it, those, are, they're, those aren't fair. Here, I'll show you a photo yeah. of what I'm talking well, about. Well, in the photos, just, all the light just starts diffusing in there. It yeah. looks cloudier than it really is. Yeah, yeah And on sure. a personal taste preference, I don't like the thick mouthfeel. 
one, like a big phenol heavy IPA. Yeah. Yeah. I told you either too. I told you about the Florida brewer that everybody knows that did yeah. his own test right. on these, right? Did I not uh, talk about that on the show? Maybe you were in New Zealand mm-hmm. still. Well, so. I think we brought it up. But uh, well, Wayne Wombles yeah, okay. commented on a thread I had on this on okay. Facebook. So Wayne, I yeah. went and I spent some time with him when we were in Florida for the cruise, and that very day that I was there, he had spent the whole day in his lab. Um, exactly, and he took these. He he wanted to put this East Coast IPA thing to the test, sure. so he he drank them as uh, as they were made, which is cloudy and juicy or whatever. <laughs> and then he took the same beer and ran it through his own centrifuge and got a clear version of it, and then did his own side by side test. And his opinion, although I think he did it pretty uh, fairly scientifically, was that um, the the clear, the clarified version tasted better every single time, and not by a little. He said they were significantly better every single time when I cleaned them, when I filtered them. <laughs> so, uh, again, that, that is his opinion, but I thought it was pretty interesting. He's, but they he's taste a great different, brewer, right? So, very different. Now, under the premise that there's different palates and different people like different things. Yeah, I mean, you know, the juicy beer lovers could still like it better. True. This is a subjective. I'd like, to give, I'd like to give them all a little test, though, wouldn't you? Well, sure. I'd like to give them a blind test, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, that's one of the projects I have underway is I want to make this. That's why I'm fighting on how to make these cloudy beers. Yeah. So I can make one, filter half or clarify half. I'm going to just use findings. Okay. And uh, and then have to do some side-by-sides. So, yeah. Triangle For, test. Forty percent oats. And all your hops in the whirlpool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. And, uh-huh. and, and, and boil only for a protein break. And then, oh, and, then, oh. and then knock out into your whirlpool oh, and throw all your hops in there. And that's how, uh, that's how, that's how that's they're the, done. That's a, okay, good. Yeah. I'm Talk to Annie, Annie Johnson at Pico Brew. She's doing a lot of uh, stuff like this. Okay. Uh, she, she just uh, she was, uh, posted a photo of one on the oh. Facebook page. Looks exactly the same. But again, it, it's hazy. It's not this juicy, yeah. full of yeast, velvety... I um, hope you don't hey. end up liking it, Tasty, and we have to change your name well, to Juicy. I'm trying to be open about it. Oh. Didn't we do that? Did was it, wasn't that like that? Oh, your mom name? did. Your mom did one, did Oh! <laughs> no. No, I think he meant that for real. No, she really did. Yeah, was she it called my mom juicy. or was yes. it Kate's your mom? Mom. No, your mom? Your mom. That's it's right. Mom. Mis, 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 mis juicy. Mis I think you're right. That's right. right. <laughs> called me Juicy instead of Tasty. And that started to catch on, and I start like, giving you guys dirty looks. <laughs> right. All the ladies call me Juicy. All right, I got to keep us moving so we can right. get to our guest. Like but uh, let me get through just a couple more emails here. Um, someone wrote in about podcasts. Are you guys not on Apple Podcasts anymore? Uh, we are on iTunes, and I think that automatically puts it on the podcast. So, uh, yeah, we're still there. Um, in fact, everything as of last week was fully up to date. So um, you might have to resubscribe if something happened on the iTunes side. But they're all there. Um, here's another one. Uh, hey, guys, I'm not sure what's going on, but the last session I can download is Pizza Port uh, from February 22nd. I hope it's updated soon. Oh, you're cut I, off. I refresh it every day. Uh, Mike, check it again. Uh, one thing is if you had downloaded more than, I forget what it is, 12 episodes in 24 hours, you'll get cut off. And the other thing is I was uh, several days late last week uh, putting a new one up. So um, check it again. They're, they're there. You might have to resubscribe if you don't see it. Um, here's another one. Hey, JP. Uh, regarding the indie beer discussion that you, Beardy, and Tasty argued for the if it's good, drink it approach, yeah. I'd like to present an opposing view. I concede the ridiculousness of labels, craft, indie, and otherwise, but I think the last 40 years of beer history tells us uh, that we need to know about consolidation. Uh, it tells us all we need to know about consolidation. Excuse me. Uh, it has never benefited the consumer. Sure, it benefits brewery owners, stockholders, distributors, and uh, maybe public. But never the consumer. Big beer has done nothing to bring you the choice that you have in today's beer market. It's a long, it's a long, basically that's, that's the crux of his thing. Oh, where okay. where uh, you know, the consolidation is bad because it's going to eventually limit us. Um, and I like Vaughn. He's a nice dude. He's a good listener. And he's, he's all, he was on Dr. Homer a couple times. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Here's, he sums it up a little bit, too. I, I, he, he says, I think that drinkers should, uh, he puts stars around that. I don't know why. Uh, stop drinking brands acquired by big beer. Uh, yes, he says, his example is Sculpin is a terrific beer. But Tasty's, uh, if it's the best beer on the board, I'm drinking it uh, mentality is a short-sighted error in judgment, he says. There are plenty of great choices we can make, uh, which would ensure that we still have great choices 5, 10, and 20 years from now by choosing an evil twin over a Sculpin. So there you go. That's Sergeant Devo uh, in the BN Army. More like Diva after that rant. What? Whoa. Each his own. 
Um, Jim Cook and Ken Grossman and somebody else just did a recent panel that I read an article about where uh, Jim Cook brought up something that nobody's talking about, and that is, you know, sometimes these buyouts. Um, you know, which they're not just happening from the big breweries, but even when they are, there are shareholders and, and, and there are funds that, that buy things out, too, for example. And if they come from, a, a, a you know, more on the corporate side of funds where it's just a bunch of shareholders rather yeah. than rather than more of what they call like a family fund, which might be like a trust that a family had, like a very wealthy family has a trust and they invest that money. Um, that's a, you have a little more control of that. But the ones that just come from like giant funds. He said, you know, we always hear that, oh, we're, we're not going to change management. We're not going to change much. And, and and that Jim Cook was kind of saying that all might be well and good, but what they're not talking about is that all of these things eventually have a liquidity event, right? And he said that they're usually invest not to get a, uh, yeah right. that they're not there just to make their dividends on the stock that they own, uh, no. it, you know, forever. That eventually the stock should go up, and then there's a liquidity event, and they make a big chunk of change. Yeah. And he said, and the lifespan of those are usually about ten years. So he was kind of saying one thing that that a lot of people aren't talking about is. The face of craft beer, if, if these things keep getting bought up, in 10 years, when they get sold off in their liquidity event to who knows who. I mean, it could be they could get sold to Mitsubishi or they could get <laughs> right. sold to uh, X, you know, Fidelity Funding. Uh, uh, people who have nothing, who have even less to do with craft beer than the, than the first people that are buying it, yeah. for, for example. And he said, that's the time when you should really be concerned about your favorite, you know, brands. Hmm. I thought that was a good point that I we hadn't thought point. about. It's not just the buyout now, but the second buyout. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that, that second wave. Um, uh, how many of those were there? I know the only one I know is the uh, Dogfish one, and that was, that was only like 10% or something of the company. It wasn't very, a whole bunch of it. What? That was an equity. Uh, yeah, Dogfish, Dogfish sold fifteen percent. Oh, wow. to, to like a, I yeah, I think it's fifteen. Don't quote me on that specifically. Was it really I think it was amount. around fifteen percent. Um, and was, was Sam on this panel by chance? No, oh. not. I forget who the third person was, but it was not Sam. Um, but Dogfish Head was brought up. Um, because of the the smaller amount, but but one thing they were differentiating between something like a family fund, which I mentioned was like a trust, yeah. which they generally have a little more leeway and aren't just looking for that liquidity event in ten years, although they could. Uh, then the the larger funds that are just buying things up, like like any other business, isn't that more like the Cigar City conglomeration? That's yeah, kind of happening on the East Coast. If I remember right, in that article they discussed that one. That actually is still more of a, f- a family fund. Oh, it is, uh, oh, even okay. though it's a fairly large. Large one, I think the way it's set up is that a lot more of it comes from a family fund. So oh, okay. they did bring that up because that is, yeah, that was like a, a, a financial company, right, a trust yeah. that was built to do this, but it came from more of a family fund. Okay. So they could, I think the, <laughs> my brain's just dead, so forgive me. Go check it out. Just if you Google yeah, this, Jim true. Cook and. Yeah. and it's um, called The Meeting of the Malt, and the third person is Dick Yingling. There we go. All right. So go read it because they're going to do a better job than I am. But they're talking about how that Cigar City one might be a better one to watch and see what happens because it comes from a safer side of this type of investing. Hmm. Um, But anyhow, uh, give it a look. All right. Uh, last uh, email here, or the feedback that came in. James writes in about the Drake's commercials we've been running. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but Drake's Brewing Company became a sponsor of ours a couple yeah. months ago. i um, so happy that they did that. They've always sponsored our uh, Bruce Festival, which they did again this year. That's true. Yeah, big we, supporter. We thank them for that, and now they're supporting the show, too. So if you see Drake's, I mean, we've always told you to buy Drake's, uh, even, when they, <laughs> even when they weren't paying us because we love them. And so it's really cool to be able to. I think right now they're only in California and Nevada. Okay. But uh, they're expanding. So Watch you see grow. it out there, support them. Thank support you. them. So he says, I've noticed that the two Drake's commercials that have been on, uh, there's some pretty sweet metal playing in the background. Can you point me toward a particular band or song name? I'll look it up for you, but I will tell you that the voice in the commercial, it's his band. So you're hearing from um, Brandon, uh, who, who works at Drake's, and he's he's doing the voiceover himself, and it's his band. So I'll find mm-hmm. out from him who it is, and I'll tell you on the next show, uh, or, or what the, the band is called. The band? Um, I'm, not act- I'm not actually sure they're still making music. Um, but, oh, okay. Um, he's like, look, I got this rockin', yeah, he's like, rockin I, track. Because I asked him, I was like, yeah, it's pretty good metal, dude. Who, you know, is this a local band you like or something? He's like, nah, it's my band. You know, we, re- <laughs> yeah. we recorded it a while ago. <laughs> We're and local, I was but like, I hate it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. So... All right, go support Drake's uh, when you can. All right, so here's what we'll do. Uh, thanks for your feedback. Uh, you can always send that into feedback at thebrewingnetwork.com. We are going to take a quick break, and when we
we come back, uh, we're going to get Eagle Rock Brewing Company in the studio. We're going to taste some of their beer and talk to you about all the big things that they're up to. So hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back. Listening to the Brewcasters. Brewcasters on the Brewing Network. The 21st Amendment. Watch out! Do you like beer? They make beer. Watch out! Do you like friends and fun? They make friends and fun. Watch out! Do you still like to have a good time? The 21st Amendment. Watch out! The 21st Amendment in San Francisco, located at 563 2nd Street, two blocks from the building where baseball is seen and played. Try their beers in the pub or try them in the can, featuring... Monk's Blood. Made with real monk. Watch out! So why not have the best time of your life? Go to the 21A and Sean O'Sullivan will personally greet you with a can of... Monk's Blood. The 21st Amendment. Watch out! This advertisement is not in any way affiliated nor associated with the 21st Amendment Bar and Pub, nor its subsidiaries or affiliates. This telecast is not copywritten by the 21st Amendment for the private use of the Brewing Network. Any use of this telecast without Jamil Zanishev's consent is prohibited. Suck it, JP. The 2016 Homebrew Con is coming. June 9th through 11th in Baltimore, Maryland. Be a part of the biggest and best homebrew event in the world with thousands of homebrewers from all walks of life. Homebrew Con is open to anyone 21 and older who is a member of the American Homebrewers Association or Brewers Association. Not an AHA member? Don't wait. Register now. The AHA is dedicated to promoting the community of homebrewers and empowering homebrewers to make the best beer in the world. Social packages and full conference registration is available now. Enjoy seminars from industry leaders like Sam Caligioni, Stan Hieronymus, Jeff Larson, Paul Sangster, and Drew Beecham. Visit the Homebrew Expo for the newest and best in equipment and ingredients. And don't miss Club Night, the biggest night in homebrewing. Register today at homebrewcon.org and join the Brewing Network in Baltimore for all the fun at HomebrewCon. Since the first time the Brewing Network microphones turned on, More Beer was behind it. More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. MoreBeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. MoreBeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. Go to MoreBeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, More Beer's social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to morebeer.com today and take advantage of the buzz, the forum, the learning center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. Marin Brewing Company in Northern California has been making award-winning beers for more than 25 freaking years. Today, I want to tell you about their new 12-ounce cans of Mount Tam Pale Ale. The good stuff, Mount Tam is bright gold. 5.5% ABV to keep you feeling good and has been winning awards since 1989. If you're visiting the Bay Area, get your butt out to Marin Brewing Company. They pour tasty beers and serve great food every day until midnight. Come in for a tour, stay for the food, and pick up a six-pack of cans of Mount Camp Pale Ale to enjoy at home, camping, biking, or whatever the hell you do. Owner Brandon Moylan has this to say about Marin Brewing beers. It's freaking awesome. Marin Brewing has won more than 100 gold medals in international competitions. Check out MarinBrewing.com for all their award-winning beers, food, and merch. Marin Brewing Company in Larkspur, California. Award-winning taste, refreshing finish. It's freaking awesome. The most wonderful week of the year is coming. 
It's American Craft Beer Week, May 16th through 22nd. Thousands of events all over the country will celebrate craft beer and brewing in all 50 states. Join the celebration. Visit craftbeer.com now. It's the home of American Craft Beer Week and hosts a growing list of events around the nation. And visit American Craft Beer Week on Facebook and support craft beer with more than 60,000 small and independent brewery fans. If you're a brewery or craft beer retailer, plan an event and post it for everyone to see on craftbeer.com's official calendar for American Craft Beer Week. It's the mother of all beer weeks, American Craft Beer Week, the most wonderful time of the year. Brewcasters are back. And it is 401 beer. Whatever. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for hanging out with us. And thanks to our good friends over at Great Fermentations. You can go to greatfermentations.com right now and check them out. It's a great homebrew shop that's been supporting us, and you should go support them. They have the largest catalog of Blickman products on the web, provide same-day shipping on some of the main items, and a lot of vendors don't even uh, carry all those items and can take up to three weeks to get them to you. But not Great Fermentations. Their staff is one of the best trained using Blickman products and offer top-notch customer service for you. So please go check them out at greatfermentations.com or you can call them at 888-HME-BREW. All right, so as promised, we've got the boys from Eagle Rock Brewing in the studio. Welcome, guys. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, Straight out of L.A. Uh, Weren't you like L.A.'s first brewery in I don't know how long or something? I mean, it's it's a bit, uh, I guess, you know, contentious to say maybe the first in... I don't know. We we were the I guess the first of the the new wave. Okay. But in the city of LA, um right around the same time as as we opened up was Ladyface. Uh there okay. in, in yeah. Agora and um Great Brewery. Strand Brewing Company in in Torrance. Okay. We all we opened up like within a couple months of each other. I see. Okay. Um but yeah, I mean really the the first in a in a while to kind of do the the newer model of of brewery tasting room kind of customer interaction type of type of uh of model okay uh, folks at home, you are listening to Jeremy Raub. He's one of the founders. Uh, yep. and, and there's, do you do it with your dad too? Yeah, my da- my dad and my wife. Um, okay, yeah. my dad is the one that taught me to homebrew, and uh, so we just we were homebrewing for a long time before. Okay, and that's how that. Got you, know, it. you guys decided, you know how it to, happened. decided to go for it. <laughs> yeah. And then also in the studio, we've got, and I hope I say it right, we have Lee Bukowski. That's it. Okay. And uh, you're the barrel master at, at Eagle Rock, which is exciting because I honestly, so I haven't been to Eagle Rock in, in years. I've had your beer uh, more recently, of course, but uh, you didn't have a barrel room or a, a, a program, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we started out uh, with pretty much from, I guess, Within the first month of brewing our first beer, we started with some barrels, but kind of the idea was let's forget about them and see what happens. Okay. Um, so Yearling, which is one of our, our uh, sour beers that we do, um, was basically our one-year anniversary beer, but it had sat in the barrels for almost a year. Okay. We, we forgot about it, so to speak. Nah, nice. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're doing more of them now. Okay. All right, so we'll learn about that today uh, with the help of Lee. And then also Eric Garcia, the brewmaster, is in. Hello. So you guys have grown a lot. I mean, now there's three of you. <laughs> really and literally, there are three of us. <laughs> You're like amoebas. You just keep splitting. <laughs> when I went, to, I think I've only been twice to the, and we'll talk about some of your expansion because I think there's another location now too, but I went to the original location. I met you and, and your dad. I remember your dad uh, really clearly because I have a really weak handshake. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and he shook my hand and like my wrist like collapsed or something. And he was like... Hey, you all right? Your, your, <laughs> your wrist just kind of fell apart there. Well, we use that as a, cracking. <laughs> yeah. I will break We you. use his strength as a like a, a unit of measure in the brewery. Okay. So it's like, yeah. like, how tight is this? It's one Steve. One Steve <laughs> means you have to go get a wrench to get it off. Okay. Yeah. It's also like the Richter scale. Like, it's it's 
Not exponential. linear. Oh, just sure. Each level is that much more intense. Yeah, I'm in the negative Steve's, apparently. Uh, <laughs> he, but he did it also with such a straight, uh, dry, you know, straight page. Oh, you're you all right? Your, uh, your wrist kind of just fell apart there. <laughs> How many Justins would equal one Steve? Yeah. Oh, That's oh, where we yeah. got to go. You guys, had a, you guys had a scale. Like, there was so many Yodas to a Steve or so. I can't. Well, one Steve is like five Yodas. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, he, he was very cool, but I just I, and at first I was like, oh yeah, I kind of have a bad. R- wait a second. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh well. Uh, so when did you guys open? Uh, it was two thousand nine. Okay. Um, we were, I guess, for about almost two years. We were in the the planning and building and uh, permitting phases. Um, what was your job before that? Before that, I was a film music editor. Oh, yeah? Um, so okay. I helped to put soundtracks into movies and worked with composers. And uh, Did you like that? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. I guess the, the kind of one of the motivators for me to leave that industry was just um, the hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's gotten so, so much better. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also just, uh, you know, the, the fact that I was – doing all this work for other people that sometimes didn't seem like there was, they didn't care yeah. how hard I was working or it didn't really matter. I was just a little worker bee in a gigantic hive that was, yeah. you know, somewhere else. Uh, so Did you go to school for a long time to, to do that? No, it was, a, I went to like a trade school. I went to okay. a, to full sale, uh, full sale center for the recording arts, which okay. is down in, in Orlando. Um, and uh, basically, I learned how to make records because I'd go into high school. I'd played in rock bands and thought, nice. yeah. you know, I'm not good enough to play guitar to be a solo artist. So I'm going to learn how to make records and <laughs> yeah. I'll make my own. <laughs> and then when I was there, I was like, oh, there's this whole side of, uh, you know, post production. That sounds fun. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, that's why I moved out to L.A. OK. And then, uh, yeah, did that for about. 12 years, I guess. And were you homebrewing pretty much that whole time, too, with your dad, or what? Uh, no, it's funny, because I um, started homebrewing with my dad uh, back in, like, 94, I think it was. Um, and I was just, had just finished, or was finishing high school around that time. Um, and he was he was already brewing at home. Okay. Um, and and so I just kind of thought, well, this looks what, you can make beer. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Wow, <laughs> um, you know, and looking in the boil kettle, like oh, it's green. That's what. That's, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, just he he taught me how to make beer, and uh, we brewed a bunch of times together back in those days. And then after I left for school and kind of drank a lot of shitty beer and forgot all about you know good beer. Yeah. I mean, back in those days, too, there there just wasn't, especially in upstate New York where I grew up, there wasn't the availability of, of, of good beers. And uh, sure, it's it's a completely different world. Saranac was like the craft of that time, right? Yeah, yeah. And there was, I think there was like, like J.W. Dundee's Honey okay, yeah. Brown or something, <laughs> wow. like, yeah, something like that. That sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that too, yeah. I love honey. Yeah. I love it so much. <laughs> we were talking about that yesterday. <laughs> um, and yeah, so and it was a lot harder. I remember my dad got so excited when he was like, we can get surplus uh, Hallertau middle fruit hops from Sam Adams. This is amazing. I was yeah. like, what are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. um, and then, you know, fast forward to after moving out to L.A. Um, and my, my folks moved out shortly after I did. And it was sort of like, hey, why don't we celebrate? The family's back together again on the West Coast now and... Uh, you know, you still have some of that old brewing equipment. And so we, we started brewing. But when we went to the homebrew shop to get supplies, it was like, holy shit, there's like ingredients galore and like yeah. kettles and all kinds of cool equipment. And ah, so <laughs> you got into it. It was like, yeah, it was like crack, you know, it was like, great, let's do this every weekend. OK. All the time. <laughs> and is your dad retired at this point or he, he just relocated and was working in L.A. too? Yeah. So he was uh, relocated and working in a, uh, nor- northern California. OK. And then, like they live in Ventura. So Got it. Um, 
so yeah, it was basically just every weekend we'd get together and brew and taste the beers and get excited. And then uh, my wife, Ting, um, who grew up in a restaurant family, would be like, what are you guys excited about? This is not that good. You know, she, <laughs> I love it. She, she uh, growing up in a restaurant family. Her her palate was sort of trained better than ours was. Our okay, country uh, hick type palate. <laughs> and then um, it's still fermenting. Taste right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess you know, being growing up in a Chinese family and just being brutally honest. I guess kind of having that. You know, we we kind of sugar-coated things and she was not yeah. about that so she would be like this sucks <laughs> <laughs> um i love people like that i'm yeah. so envious i can't be that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. and and look you know looking back it was great because eventually when she was like whoa this one is actually good i would i would pay money for this we're like yes <laughs> you know like that was so you're saying there's a chance <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's kind of how it all Snowballed. And you, guys, and you just went for it. Yep. Okay. Uh, are, uh, what's your building like now? Have you guys expanded in that location that I saw, which was uh, shortly after you opened, I think? Uh, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> how, how much time we got here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let me, let, me refer, let me start, but let me go backwards a little bit uh, and, and we, instead of that. Uh, I, I want to talk about the equipment that you started with, and then maybe we can talk about what you've grown into. Because you started with uh, by repurposing dairy equipment, right? Yeah, actually, we got incredibly lucky because we we started out with the old Alesmith equipment. Okay. So when uh, when we were kind of in those early planning stages, um, you know, we were looking around on Pro Brewer and all the the, the networks that were out there at the time, and um, you know, what if we did used equipment? We had priced out a brand new seven barrel brew house um and it was going to be like 200 grand wow at the time which you know now it's double that yeah. for seven <laughs> barrels or something <laughs> um but you know we 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 were leaving i remember this really distinctly we were uh getting ready to leave i was taking her to seattle because she had never been it was like for her birthday and it was like oh this is a great beer town it's gonna be fun we're gonna gonna go check things out and um like hours before we left, I saw a post on Pro Brewer that the old original Alesmith equipment was going up for sale. Yeah. They were upgrading. And I was just like, holy shit, what this, what, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're making <laughs> good beer. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> um, yeah, like they were kind of one of our brewing idols, you know, from, yeah. from the time we learned about good beer. And uh, so we like flew to Seattle and on, like on the way, or, like, calling being like calling my dad and being like okay you got to go to the bank and do this and we're calling the guys at alesmith and like we're gonna we want to buy this here's what we're gonna do yeah and then we (laughs) landed in seattle we're like doing bank transfers and like getting it all worked out to the last minute and finally we're like yes we got this equipment and (laughs) you know it ended up saving us over a hundred grand from the, the what we were going to get okay um we're going to get a seven barrel system and this was a 15 barrel system that was repurposed from old, old dairy equipment. Nice. So they had, they had really done all of the repurposing before we, we got it. Um, but then we just kind of, we went down and saw everything in place and, and, uh, took pictures and saw how they had hooked it up and we just tried to do it as best we could in our place. And, uh, I just went for it. Yeah, I just went for it. So I'm feeling the Brewing Network's age right now because <laughs> in the early years, we, we interviewed out of Peter. an old dairy t- <laughs> 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 our first studio. Yeah, that's why it sounded like yeah. shit. Well, we interviewed Peter Zion when he was still brewing on that equipment. Cool. And we talked about his dairy equipment. Yeah. And here oh, I am. Yeah. I'm now doing a second interview on the system, on the same system. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. Uh, it's, it's amazing to yeah. me right now how long we've been doing this. Uh, so, yeah, second generation of this equipment that the BN has even talked about. Right. Yeah. That's I mean, how you know it's old. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, when we were, you know, anyone who's in the planning stages or has already started a brewery, you kind of, you know, you know that, that moment where you're in the, everything is so like intensely real and you're just like, Oh, we're going to do it. This is it. And (laughs) you're going out talking to 
people in bars and you're like, yeah, you know, we're starting a brewery and, you know, and yeah, <laughs> kind of see, gauging people's reactions. And I remember going into Verdugo bar, um, which was the first place we ever, our first keg ever was sold there at the Verdugo bar okay, in LA. And, uh, kind of mentioning that talking to a friend and, and Ryan Sweeney, one of the owners was behind the bar and he's like, what you guys have the old Alesmith equipment. And suddenly, like, there was more interest. Some street cred. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was cool because I didn't know Ryan at the time. Of course, you know, we're great friends now. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it was kind of cool to get, hey, we're going to start a brewery. And people at that time was like, you're starting a brewery in L.A. So that was sort of a reason yeah. for attention or for disdain, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking you're insane. Right. Mainly from the city. Yeah. <laughs> but but then, you know, it kind of gave us a little bit of, of, you know, unwarranted credibility just because we had this equipment. It's sure. like, if we're going to fuck this up, then it's not because of the equipment, because obviously guys have made great beer on this equipment before us so yeah um i remember the mash tun um, oh, yeah. you want to remember it even better <laughs> <laughs> come on down and brew with us <laughs> so, you're still using it yep what is wrong yes. with you because i remember this mash and it's a it's a pretty big mash tun and it's um how do i describe it like a very a large bathtub. fermenter yeah. laid on its side right yeah. yep. um and there's no way to get the grain out of it. Oh, there's a way. Well, there's, there's, one <laughs> there's one way. You got to shovel it out and you over shovel the wall. You shovel it out and over, right? Yeah. It's yeah. called, yeah. there's no hoe. It takes four errands. <laughs> this is what right. I'm getting at. And now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which is like a fraction of a Yoda, I think. I, <laughs> I don't remember the conversion. But. How many pounds of grain are we talking here? Because we've had people come in and talk about their manual match mm. tons. This is a seriously man, and it's big. Well, well that's well, why we like to brew Solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the well, low alcohol beer, right? 3.8. How many pounds are we, you know, on average, are we talking come out of this so, thing? So I remember, well, I'll let you answer that question. But first, I'll just to tie it into the history. I was going to say when we went down uh, and talked to Peter about everything and, you know, and, and Bill, who still still brews there, he's now brewing for the, the McKellar uh, oh, project. Yeah, um, that's cool. Bill Batten. But, yeah, he was he was saying that uh, he was like, yeah, it's it's, you know, it's. We top it out with Speedway. It's kind of like almost overflowing, and it's a little over 2,000 pounds. And uh, think of how often they brewed that beer. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. We only do a beer that big every so often. But Populous, <laughs> which is uh, the most volume we do, uh, it's about 1,200 pounds. Okay, and so you're per, still doing this on a daily basis, shoveling this stuff out also, and over the Also, that's 1,200 pounds dry. dry. Right, yeah. dry. Yeah, yeah it's dry. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Good point, Leroy. So 2,400 yeah. pounds. I mean, it's <laughs> got to be at least double wet. Uh, I can't believe you're still doing this. I mean, Peter... We can't either. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, when we went down to do the... Or the, we went down to talk about doing the uh, Dairy Tank collaboration with them. Over at Alesmith, and uh, he was Peter was just talking about he's like had shoulder surgery <laughs> just from graining out of that mash tun. He's like for an so many years, like yeah, a, wow. like a decaying athlete. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, right. I blew my shoulder out of twenty six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had a, I had a good career. Twelve yeah. years. Yeah. 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 I'm a commentator. Oh my god. I mean, that was <laughs> only a few. It's a blogger. Peter, Peter had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has had such good advice throughout the years. And I, I remember one of the best pieces of advice I've ever received from anybody, you know, life in general, but okay, sp yeah. specifically for brewing was he said, when we went down to kind of check out the equipment, he was like, you know, don't try to do it by yourself. Okay. <laughs> Just joke. Yeah. 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 And, that, you know, I, I kinda, that is good life uh, advice, too. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. you can yeah. apply that to Everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I feel there are like, some well, things that duh, are better by but, yourself. Right? Okay. Well, yeah. Like watching movies. Right. <laughs> Full length movies. And drinking. Yeah. <laughs> Don't try but, to do it by yourself. But that, and also he was like, you know, kind of at, at that time he was, he hadn't, he wasn't doing most of the day to day brewing. And, and so he was like, yeah, you know, I, I, I get in there as much as I can. He's like, I, 
brewing is a young man's job, especially on this equipment. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. on this, right? <laughs> right. Um, when, whenever we have people come in to guest brew, they're always shocked. They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I have to grain out of that? Yeah. <laughs> I was system doesn't have a single button. There's not one button. Wow. <laughs> you guys make the collaborators do work? Well, that's why we do collaboration. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. It's one day we get off. That's not how, <laughs> that's not how tasty collaborate. No, I'd, bring, I'd bring like he four or five people. people with me. Yeah. 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 Well, it is, it is much in the, the same way. And yeah. one of those touch yeah. vacuum things, you know, just like the way back, right? the shop yeah. back. Yeah. Like that shit, yeah. I shop back, did that shit yeah. out. But it, all in, in all seriousness, and, and I understand, but <laughs> I am surprised that you're still brewing on that, uh, that manual of a system. Well, I got to say, I mean, so basically the, the only original equipment that we purchased from Alesmith that we're still using um, is the mash tun, the okay. boil kettle, and then what, what we're using as a cold liquor tank, they were using as a, as a fermenter. Okay. Um, but they're so the original fermenters that they used and that we used as our original fermenters um, were these open, essentially just like our mash tun, uh, these open top dairy tanks that have sort of a, a rounded bottom. This is like mm-hmm. a big bathtub, like yeah. I think Lee was yeah. describing it as. Um, it's very accurate. Yeah, and and um, you know. The, the, as a fermenter, it, it was very cool for what it could do to the to the esters and and kind of, you know, the, the yeast uh, kind of interaction with with that size and shape of a, of a vessel. Like there's there's less of a column of beer for the esters to to kind of get blown off from. Okay, so you can get a little bit more ester production. Um, uh, but really, ultimately, it was kind of a, more of a practical issue why those fermenters are not great for doing production beers. Um, is just there's one valve at the bottom of the tank, and the bottom of the tank is where the beer and the yeast are going to come out. You know, and, and also the jackets only went up about what, like... Like a halfway third a, a of the third, way. halfway up the so just side. Stays of the cold tank. at the bottom. Right. The well, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, because heat rise. It's sort of the yeah. opposite. Yeah, the, of the right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the, you know, those tanks, as designed for for dairy, there originally was an impeller in the in the top of the tank. There was a motor mounted at the top, and the impeller would kind of stir the milk to ensure the temperature would be. I see. Consistent throughout. Um, but yeah, you know, you don't want to. Stir your fermenting. No. Wort. Maybe there was some form of that just with the agitation of yeast. Anyway, sure. though, right? But but not enough. So we would get uh, we would get we would have uh, probes in the top of the fermenter, but then we would pull samples from the bottom, and we would. I got it. It 20 was twenty degrees. Terrible twenty oh, degrees. Yeah. Wow. Stratification. It was. Oh, wow. It was a daily calibration a struggle. situation. Yeah, I trying see. to work with the temperature probes on that thing. Okay, and this the yeast management was. But you couldn't couldn't really harvest out, yeah. but then you also couldn't get bright beer out because it would pull <laughs> a little bit of yeast as it went. I, I mean, see. right? I'm, you know, kind of half ashamed to admit, but really <laughs> proud now that we're past it. But like. Back in those days, we would harvest yeast by taking the, the plastic shovels that we now use to grain out with, mm-hmm. um, sanitize them, and then just very carefully and quietly, you know, trying not to breathe too hard, uh, right. scooping <laughs> out the yeast, <laughs> putting it into sanitized buckets, and then sure, that would be our repitch. And, you know, uh, everyone kind of cr- probably cringes now when they hear about that, but shit, that's how... A lot of breweries started out, especially um, in the late '90s and early 2000s. And um, I mean, even now, you see pictures of Belgian breweries like top cropping mm-hmm. and doing yeah. that same yeah. kind of yeah. process. Anchor's still doing it. Yeah, Anchor's yeah. Still. and you know they they have uh, the room, the enclosed room, right. to kind of yeah. help protect it. Yeah. So yeah. we didn't. We didn't have that, and and you're dripping sweat all over yeah. it, probably. Well, like, they, they are using because their it was like 100 degrees in there. They're using yeah. their mash out shells the, uh, to harvest yeast. The other thing is, we, <laughs> used to, uh, we used to to kind of ensure that no fruit flies would get in there. Is we, you guys remember this very yes. well, I'm sure. Um, by the cuts and scars on your fingers, we would take uh, metal tape like that you get for for ducting work yeah. or whatever, yeah. and we would tape the lids. And every and it that tape, if you've ever used it, yeah. it, it tears pretty easily. So you'd get these little sh- 
Like the lids of the buckets? Yeah, what are you taping? Yeah. yeah. No, oh, yeah, the, the lids of the, the, the fermenter. Oh, the fermenter. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Any, like, open little space where something wow. in theory might fly in. Just, oh, wow. Like, it, it was it. interesting. It was, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a labor and, of love. In hindsight, too, we probably weren't, you know, pitching enough, so... There was really vulnerable wort just mm. maybe sitting there longer than it should be okay. sitting and active. Yeah. With a bigger pitch, a, a more vigorous fermentation, you'd have a lot of positive pressure. It would yeah. Fucking home brewers, yeah. man. Because we've had those discussions on here when brewers have – I went and saw uh, – this was a long time ago, and my listeners have heard it all before. But I went to a brewery called Colonel in, in England. They just had this uh, open fermenter, really small operation mm-hmm. at the time. And it wasn't in a clean room or anything else. And I was – I was flabbergasted. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. What are you doing? And but he was just talking about the, the positive pressure. Yeah. And their beer was great. I loved their beer. Yeah. Um, so, but I'm glad you're admitting things like that because it helps our listeners too. Like if you're under pitching, then what fermentation's taking a bit longer. Yeah, there's I mean, not as like much positive pressure. Sort of yeah. I remember yeah. too. Like uh, Peter was telling us how the the guys at White Labs just called them insane because they would over pitch. When not when they were using those tanks, okay, you know, qualify it by that. But the guys at White Labs would be like, well, "You want to order how much yeast?" And they're like, "Yeah, just we're gonna just way over to pitch because we're using these tanks. Things are dangerous. You know, we we want to make mm-hmm. sure we're hedging our bets." And you know, we remember the stories Peter would tell us. Yeah, you'd come in some, sometimes. You'd come in in the morning after brewing Speedway, and you would just smell that smell, and you knew. When you turn on the lights, you're going to see beer all over the floor. You're going to see the lid <laughs> oh, of those fermenters yeah. on the floor. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. that happened to us, you know, a, a couple of times. Not that the whole lid would be lifted and off, but um, in some of the other, like the the enclosed tanks that have the, just a little manway on top, we would get over ferments and, mm-hmm. you know, just it's wow. all that figuring it out process that you do when you're... Sure. It's like you get new homebrew equipment. It's the same thing. and You try to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, Trial and, this and error. Was, this was the, the big homebrew system for us, basically. It so. is really a big, oversized homebrew now, system. Now, have you since upgraded the fermenters? Cause it sounds like you were talking about these in past tense. So, yeah. Yeah, fermenters have been upgraded. Um, the kettle is just fantastic. I, I love that kettle. I mean, sure, there's little faults here and there. I'm sure these guys will, will complain more about it. Since they use it day to day, I don't use it day to day anymore. But but um, you know, there's there's three steam zones on it, um, and it it was built in like the '60s, and it as for dairy purposes, and it's really it's it's a pretty solid kettle. The mash tun, I mean, it's so it's it's a it was insulated and and glycol jacketed for for cooling milk. Mm. Um, but it, it wasn't for steam. So we don't, it's basically like a big picnic cooler. Like we don't, we can't heat our, our mash. Yeah. There's no you know, steps. It's, it's just, yeah. it's a single infusion, single infusion, no mash out kind of situation. Um, single temperature rest, uh, you know, so that's very much like a homebrew s- setup. I say um, it's like British. So British. Yeah, do, yeah, okay. you, British. do you just... I guess I'm trying to figure out: Do you just love it and and the beer that it produces, or you've you've decided to you know reinvest your money into other things like new fermenters instead, and just deal with the mash tun for now? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. I mean that sort of is the the least of the evils, uh, so to speak, because the uh, no, unless you're Eric. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, I mean, yeah. New shoulders are cheap. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears compared to. Phenols and fusels are. <laughs> Come on. But these well, are also well, important. I have to ask why can't, why can't you just put a manway in the, in, the, in the bottom of it? Well, for one, it's, it's just some welding. We would have to elevate it because oh, now it's oh. on the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And two, and, because now it's a right of okay, passage. Okay, how about on the front? <laughs> Everybody at Eagle Rock has to yeah. deal with this on the, thing. Or on the front, even you could just you know kind of push them out with a. Well, and it's and it's two layers of stainless with some insulation in between. Oh, that's right. It's jacket. Mm-hmm. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, I mean, but these are, uh, you know, and I'm sort of being picky about this and, and really asking about it because these are important decisions that you have to make as a small business owner, too, who it sounds like maybe you don't want to take on a bunch of loans and investment and things like that. Yeah. You're going to deal with what you have and decide where to put your money. I mean, ultimately, we don't have a ton of room there, so it, maybe it doesn't make sense to upgrade that when eventually we're going to need to move out of there anyway. So I see, maybe yeah. it's like, well, let's just hold on. And when, we, okay. when we move... 
we'll learn from the millions of mistakes we made and everything will be awesome. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's kind of the, we still get 85% to 90% efficiency out of that thing. Nice. So, wow. I mean, with, so it is like a with home medium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, it got better converse really quick too, right? Cause oh, it's shallow. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Like, uh, four lot what do we, is about 25 minutes. What do we do? And, like, <laughs> Five minute rests and then start Vorloff. Yeah. It's, wow. it's, it's literally nice. about a half an hour and then we start running off. No kidding. It, it, it yeah. takes a long time to fill it up. Uh, yeah. So the grist is hydrated as it falls in. I think it's pretty yeah, much all converted done, like, yeah. as it's dumping in. So it's, I it's see. Like populist would be about a 50 minute mash in. So mm-hmm. by the time it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's all in there, it's ready to go. So let me ask this uh, just thinking from a home brewer, especially because it's the thing I always screw up is my mash temperature. Oh, I thought you were going to say everything. Everything. No. Yeah. I'm glad you clarified. <laughs> so you're hydrating the grain as it comes in, and you're feeling like it's mostly, and it's converting as you're filling up, obviously. What's the uh, difference in temperature from your like from that strike water to your what you want your mash temp to be? So typically about 170 uh, strike water, it'll come down to about 153. So and is it 17 degrees? So I guess I'm just I would be worried as a, a well. Worried. Keep in mind it's hitting yeah. it's hitting uh, not hot grains, so it's reducing right. in temperature right away, almost instantly. Yeah. Yeah. And then a not hot uh, yeah. vessel. Yeah. I mean, uh, that well, number's not it's universal. In the air. It, hasn't, yeah. it hasn't hit the bottom yet, so this is all happening as it's falling. Right. Yeah. Okay. They can put a probe thermometer right where it's like all going in and kind of. Yeah. So we'll we'll take measurements through the mashing. You do. Okay. And, well, you know, see and adjust as needed. The I thing. See. The thing too that. Um, has made i think it's it's made all of our lives easier is is um we we purchased a a steam jacketed hot liquor tank mm-hmm. um and we had a a good friend of ours weld up a, a mixing station so what we did previously uh, this was a real pain in the ass yeah. <laughs> was we heated our just very much like a home brewer we heated our mash water in the kettle Mm-hmm. We transferred it into a, a holding tank that was an old dairy tank. Basically the hot liquor tank. The, the hot liquor tank, but it was unjacketed. So we had to kind of overshoot, yeah. almost boil our, our liquor. Um, or actually what we would do is we would fill the kettle with the volume we needed, get it to our strike temp, mash in, then heat the remaining water up to sparge temp, but Above plus it. like 20 degrees, Okay, go over to our hot liquor tank, then pump that on top for sparging. And, you know, as we're running off. So it was, so I you mean, sparge when the water came down to the right temperature. Yeah. 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 And it was really, I mean, our first brew day there, oh. obviously, <laughs> other, it was actually a brew week. Other <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was more accurate. It was, it was a 19 hour <laughs> brew day. Yeah. Um, wow. But, you know, a lot of it was because of that. And, you know, it was just a, a mess of hoses and and also it was just it was me and my dad i was coming down with a cold because i was so stressed and yeah and then it was like oh did you get oxygen oh shit i forgot to get oxygen we gotta run to the plumbing <laughs> supply get it right. you know like welding supply place get oxygen and then where did you put that clamp oh, it's over by the screwdriver you know yeah. all those things just figuring you, it out yeah it's like imagine your first all grain day when you've been extract brewing for so long and yeah. The crazy dramas and you know, I remember it's supply. still every brew day yeah. for me, but uh, <laughs> that particular one, yes, I remember. <laughs> well, before I take us to a break, um, so, so we can talk more, I do want to talk about the beer that that was in our glasses. I still have some of mine. Um, Umlaut, it's on tap here. Uh, tell me about this beer. It's uh, I can tell you already that I'm enjoying it a lot. It's, it's a great beer. What is it? So Umlaut was the test to see if we could make. As close as possible, a German Pilsner, but not use traditional German Pilsner ingredients. Okay. So we use our house ale strain, uh, which is 1272 from Weist. It's the American Ale 2, and it's a very versatile strain. We bring that down to 58 degrees. Our normal fermentation temperature is about 68 to 70 degrees on that on that strain. Wow. So 58 degrees, over pitch a little bit, and... This is a blend of basically 98% two row and then, you know, fractions of Cara, Cara Munich one, uh, Munich, and a uh, little bit of uh, melanoid malt. 
So no okay. Pilsner malt whatsoever in there. Interesting. How does the fermentation profile vary at the two different temperatures with the same yeast? That's a great question, Warren. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, I mean, this is significantly cleaner than what we get out of out of the warmer temperatures. Like the warmer temperatures, uh, we end up getting a lot of juicy fruit character. Mm-hmm. So juicy fruit, like it's kind of cool. Like with our thirty six fifty five, which we use for manifesto or wits or whip beer, um, it's kind of like we have our own house character. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of those uh, strains throw juicy fruit character. Does it take a few days longer? With the ten degree difference, or yeah, so much the speed? yeah, so our our say populist or revolution revolutions are extra pale ale, and populist is our uh, West Coast IPA. Uh, we'll it'll be pretty much down to terminal by day five, mm-hmm. and then we'll dry hop. Uh, if we didn't dry hop, we could easily turn it down at day five or day six. But with uh, umlaut, where it's down to about fifty eight, uh, it's seven to eight days, so it adds a few days. Okay. But this is, I mean, you know, it drinks. I think it drinks pretty close to a pilsner. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, there obviously there's differences, and and it's not a, a true lager. But you know, you, true lager, you're talking about like a, maybe an average of a twenty to. 24 day tank time yeah this is like an eight day or 10 day tank time well uh, sometimes the shortest time on that was about eight yeah so. and that was the first time we canned it that was back a year and a half ago but yeah it's it we could turn this over in about 10 days to 11 that's, days that's a lot of body uh, that kind of throws me like you associate a pilsner true pilsner beer to have a little bit lighter, lighter yeah body. what's the abv on this beer 4.8 Right. Yeah, it, fin- it actually finishes it's- about 1.9 to 2. I see. Well, I think one of the things that I was oh. so impressed with when Eric uh, first came to me with this this test beer, because, like, Lee and Eric came up with this idea and, and were running it by me. I was like, yeah, this sounds awesome. And then um, when he, Eric sh- brought me this sample, I was like, yeah, wow, this is really good. And... I was like, so, you know, Pilsner malt and what else? He's like, no, no, no Pilsner malt. Hmm. And, uh, but I, I was impressed by the way that there's like that slight biscuity Total. flavor that you get in Pilsner mm. malt. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, almost like there's like Tasty saying you get, you get Pilsners are typically pretty dry and crisp, but I think a lot of that does come from the hop character in Pilsners. And it doesn't need much hop because they're lighter, they're lighter hop yeah. because they have less body. Yeah, and and I, you know, I feel like there's that that malt character is kind of kind of cool. Yeah, um, no, I, I feel in the end like the uh, the malt character ends up being very Czech in yeah. in in style. Well, and it, it started, so it's like a nice blend of the um, two styles. It started as a Kolsch in theory, okay, uh, which is why it was called Umlaut is because Kolsch has a Umlaut on the O, and I think just based on our personal tastes it's kind of each time it gets a little closer to a more yeah. traditional german pills the little a well, little hoppier a little so, bitter yeah kolsch yeah. is a little yeah. rounder to me german yeah. pills a little sharper a little more distinct yeah um, and those two percent especially mulch you put in there i think make a difference i think yeah it shows yeah. kind yeah. of a yeah. secret uh, recipe there kind of thing yeah i'm glad you said kolsch because that i identify with now that i'm tasting it i think yeah. that it's in my opinion this one is, is closer to a kolsch and yeah. maybe previously it was even closer to yeah. a kolsch yeah. and now yeah, it's it getting was. closer to a pills is, and what about the hops are there german hops or not even german hops saphir yeah okay yeah, so it's magnum for bittering and saphir there's a 30 minute and a uh, 15 or 10 minute edition is saphir I know this hop. I just forget everything on earth. Is that like an American version of a noble hop? No, it's, it's a, not even it's that. German. It is German. It's oh, a new yeah. school German. Hop. It's a new yeah. school German. German. Okay, so it's not considered a noble hop, but right, it's right. new yeah. school uh, German. Okay. Pivo is, uh, P- right. Oh, yeah. Pivo from Firestone. Yeah, yeah. Pivo uses Saphir. Okay. It's kind of what uh, uh, we were like. Damn it! Now everyone's gonna. Now we're not gonna yeah. be able to get it. Right. They're using it. <laughs> Way to copy because Duval has it all. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I like this beer a lot, Um, and uh, I do think it is, um, it's not, I think like Tasty said, it doesn't 
it's not quite as crisp as a Pilsner, but it is light and easy to drink. Um, it's I also, Pilsner-y I did, is what I another, put on the board another here. Question. Yeah, I, I would call yeah. it. I would still call it Kolsch-y. If I were giving yeah. it to my friend, I oh, would yeah. say this one is Kolsch. Yeah, yeah it's it's a, a hobby um, Kolsch. And that's the whole the whole idea of the Kolsch. It's a hybrid. It's supposed to give you sort of a yeah. lager character. Yeah. yeah. But what uh, I like uh, about it is that it's not a blonde ale. I wouldn't call it that because yeah. uh, I, I wouldn't really recommend a blonde ale to my friend. But I would recommend a Kolsch ale. Uh, it's, it's just got more character to it. There's yeah. something, there's more going on there. And I don't know if it's just, like Tasty said, I think the Munich malt, the specialty malts too. It's, it's amazing. I mean, that's, it's only 2% of Ooh. specialty malts outside of two row. There's it no filter malt in there. What kind of two row? It's American two row from, or actually or Canadian two row. It's the raw two row. Oh, yeah. the best two row. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's yeah. Just fantastic. Yeah. It was Canadians. It was Canadians. Uh, you mentioned an eight day ferment. Now there was, was there like a dancer rest in the end of that or something? Or uh... Uh, on that, yeah, we we test for for diastole. We okay. do the you know the microwave, test. Yeah, the uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the microwave test, and yeah, the microwave test, and it passed and we turned down, and it was good to go. Right. So, how do you do that? Uh, take like a home brewer move. It's mm-hmm. a coffee cup and about that much in the coffee cup. So like about, a, about yeah, an inch. a coffee mug. It has to Double be a coffee fingers. mug. Yeah, yes, like, it has yeah. to be a coffee mug. Yeah. Um, a about dirty a one. <laughs> you know, stained brown from the eight oh, yeah, weeks right. of not oh, washing yeah, it. Yeah, you don't yeah. wash it before. Okay. No, why Two would fingers you? of liquid. Yeah, it has you know about uh, half an inch to three quarters of an inch of uh, beer in there, and then microwave it for about fifty seconds, and take it out of the microwave, put put some foil on that, and then let it sit for about ten minutes, and then put it in the fridge, and just compare that to uh, an already chilled sample. Aroma and flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, especially if you when you let it warm back up after removing it from the fridge. Usually, if there's diastole in there, it's, it's like very apparent. Pretty apparent. That's from a sample from the fermenter. What then, if, yeah. what if at it. lunch that day somebody had microwave popcorn? Ooh. Does it affect? <laughs> and I'm being serious. Do you think that would affect the test? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, do, do you have to put a sign on the microwave? No popcorn no. today. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I feel like well, it would affect, it would the, affect test. the test because they'd be fired. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. which is why it was only three of them. No, right. exactly. <laughs> there was a fourth. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I'm getting a picture of the application at, at Eagle Rock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, one of them is like, do you sweat a lot? Because we don't want that if you're working around the yeast and stuff. Right. Yeah. After herbicing uh, yeast. Yeah, uh, yeah. D- how are your shoulders feeling today? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you play sports like, in high school? D- do you make popcorn from scratch or do you buy microwave popcorn? <laughs> right. like, it's a very random application yeah. that you guys if have. So can you live without it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You did well, apparently, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so. You bring leftover fish for lunch. <laughs> we don't like, like that. We, we need like to that. not right. have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Let's do this. We're going to take a, a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about some more beer uh, from Eagle Rock. We've got more on tap. And then you guys brought some bottles for us too, right? Yes, sir. So yeah, let's do that. I think we're even going to do a side-by-side tasting tonight. Yeah, of, we have uh, uh, one, one beer on tap uh, here. And then in the bottles, we have with Brett. All right. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Brewcasters. The Brewcasters on the Brewing Network. That's it. I've had it. I am never putting hops in my beer again. What? Why? It's just too ridiculous. Insane prices, stupid contracts, high shipping costs, crappy selection. Dude, you need Nico Brew. Nico Brew will rock your f***ing face right the f*** off your f***ing skull. $5 shipping to all 50 states, plus fantastic international rates get you low prices on Nico Brew's great selection of hops and more. Whether you're a home brewer, a pro brewer, or a home brew shop owner, Nico Brew can get you the hops you need in increments big and small, single orders, spot buys, or full contracts. And there's only one place to join the uber special secret elite. Elite Bare Bones Club, where you'll get the best deals anywhere. Holy f***ing shit. NicoBrew.com. N-I-K-O-B-R-E-W. Nico Brew, your bare bones buddy in the brewing business. 
know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you have a cleaning problem, you need the Five Star Solution. Visit FiveStarChemicals.com or call 800-782-7019. 800-782-7019. And get the Five Star Treatment today. Williams Brewing is your online resource for prompt delivery of quality home brewing supplies. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and the freshest ingredients backed by the best customer service in the business. Do you like to mash using efficient fly sparging but would like an easy way to heat your strike and sparge water? Enter the new Brewer's Edge Electric Mash Water Heater, a plug-in, anywhere, precisely controlled heater for strike and sparge water. Ditch the fumes and second burner and make mashing easy. Go to williamsbrewing.com today and browse their vast selection. That's williamsbrewing.com. Orders placed by 4 p.m. Pacific Time weekdays ship the same day. Brewing is easy the Williams way. Are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing, but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises? Blickman Engineering has the answer. The Blickman Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. The Brew Easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design, perfect for any size brewing location. At its core, the Brew Easy is built on two gorgeous Blickman Boilermaker brew kettles, a high temperature March pump, and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater. The Brew Easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20-gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your Brew Easy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The Brew Easy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your Brew Easy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new Brew Easy all-grain brewing system. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new Brew Easy. Brewing great beer is a process of continuous learning, and the best books on every aspect of brewing can be found at Brewers Publications, with more than 50 awesome titles like Modern Homebrew Recipes by Gordon Strong, Designing Great Beers, The Ultimate Guide to Brewing Classic Beer Styles by Ray Daniels, American Sour Beers, Innovative Techniques for Mixed Fermentations by Michael Tonsmeyer. For the Love of Hops, The Practical Guide to Aroma, Bitterness, and the Culture of Hops by Stan Hieronymus. And Radical Brewing, Recipes, Tales, and World-Altering Meditations in a Glass by Randy Mosher, plus many, many more. These are the books and the authors with the knowledge to push your brewing farther than you thought possible. And you'll find them all at fine homebrew and book retailers everywhere. And visit the website at BrewersPublications.com. Brewers Publications. All the best on beer and brewing. You're tuned into this session. Because life's too short. All right, welcome back. Thanks for hanging with us. Don't forget to go over to our good friends at Beersmith. Go to Beersmith.com right now. You can download their home brewing software, although lots of pro brewers use it, too, that I know of. Uh, you can get a free 21-day trial. It works on a PC and a Mac. We love it. You will love it. It does more than you need it to do, I promise. It can do everything. It bakes bread, I think. It does, it'll make you breakfast. Uh, go to Beersmith.com and check it out. There's a podcast there you can look at. There's videos of uh, you know tutorials of everything. Like That was always the hard part for me with software because 
it's complicated and I'm, I'm a little slow. Um, but I can go watch a video. Like if I see it in front of my face, um, then occasionally I only have to watch that four times. And then I learn how to do it. And uh, he offers all of that uh, in one place over at Beersmith.com. So check it out. And, um, you know, he's also a good guy doing good things over there. And he's been supporting us for a long time. So check it out, Beersmith.com. All right. So we're still here with the uh, Eagle Rock Brewing guys and uh, getting some more of their beer in our glass right now. I was confused uh, with the beer because... They're the only brewery, I think, in existence that has uh, two different beers that start with the letter Z uh, <laughs> in the name, uh, which shouldn't be complicated, but somehow it is for me. I know that. Um, yeah. I've never, right? I'm just, I'm just looking at my list, and I'm like, wait, is this the Zagermeister or it's the, it's the Zest? I can't tell. There's too yeah. many Zs. Yeah. Who it's, uses yeah. Zs See, anymore? Now, next time we talk to the Rare Barrel, you'll be like, your naming scheme is amazing. <laughs> Don't yeah, be right. I'm not making fun of but the Rare there's Barrel. dicks down there. <laughs> this yeah. is what happens with trademarking when you run out of good names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, start using Z's yeah, and X's. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's going to get shitty, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so what beer, JP, do we have in our glass that you gave me? So I, uh, The oh. one I just gave everyone is the Equinox, okay. which is their golden sour. And then uh, the first one that I gave everyone is the Zagermeister. Okay. Um, and I'll let the guys from Eagle Rock tell you more about that. Yeah, tell and now, uh, <laughs> Yeah, tell us about these two beers because there's there's some oh. similarities here, right? I thought you know, Justin was gone for a second. They're connected right. somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm leaving. Essentially, <laughs> um, we started doing the sour beers in barrels, and then we were lucky enough to get some uh, fooders from Craftsman in Pasadena. Nice. So we have three. We do three. Since when does Craftsman have things to give away or sell? <laughs> That's, that's, uh, that's the smallest brewery I've ever seen in my life. It's somebody's garage in Pasadena, right? Uh, it's bigger it's a than that. Bigger. Um, Have you been there? It, it's been a long time. It, it was years ago. Have they moved out of that little tiny... Well, uh, he's got a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, okay. You should, you should, I'll it just, basically you should looks check like it somebody's out. garage. I love their beer, and, and, oh, yeah. but yeah. I just remember it being really a very small... Okay, so you've got uh, Fooders from Craftsman. So we've got those. Okay. Uh, we still do some barrels, uh, not as many... Um, and we're going to do more. We're sort of ramping that up. Um, but essentially, in the three fooders, we do a sour blonde ale, a red, and a sort of dark. We call it tart noir. Essentially, it's started as Solidarity, the sort of sour version of Solidarity. Okay. Um, is Solidarity your favorite beer on Earth? My favorite beer favorite? in the entire universe. That's the low alcohol. It's like a mild. Yeah. Okay. The black mild, 3.8%. Yep. JP's been talking about this beer for forever. Yeah. Every time I go down to LA, I bring back at least a bottle or two, and I try oh, yeah. to bring it in. And every time I find you guys at a festival, I go have it and love it too. Yeah. Uh, yes. But the way he talks about it, it's like uh, <laughs> well, it's like you and Pale Thirty One. No, you're right. right. Yeah, right. it's like yeah. you reinvented the, yeah. the orgasm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but you're right. It is me and Pale Thirty One. There are many beers I'd buy by the case, but I buy Solidarity by the case. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. But I mean, I dump it down the drain, but I buy it. But I didn't say I drink it. I just say I buy it. In right. case. Okay. Uh, it makes good slug bait. <laughs> <laughs> it kills weeds like no other. And we stand by that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a guarantee. The, it's yeah. in the fine print on the label. <laughs> guaranteed by Steve. I mean, we don't care what you do with it. <laughs> you just buy it, yeah. That's your own prerogative. <laughs> the way they want to live. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this essentially... Um, Equinox is the sour blonde ale, and then we took uh, a bunch of that, put it into barrels with uh, pluots and uh, some mangoes, and just kind of let it sit for a while and do its thing. Um, and I, it turned out pretty nice. So this will be the first beer uh, that's part of our Woodwork series, which essentially will be the 500 milliliter bottles. And uh, not necessarily everything out of that project has to be sour, but it'll be influenced by wood in some capacity. So either okay. fooders, barrels, or whatever else we come up with. Chips, maybe. I mean. Well, there's, <laughs> I mean, the, now there are a lot of really cool, uh, aside from just like chips and cubes and spirals, there's like these aseptic bags that you can pretty much just throw into a fermenter, and there's all kinds of other mm. stuff out there. So um, there's a lot of room for, you know, messing around. Mm. So describe the the base beer uh, to me in, uh, in general, which is which is the Equinox, right? It started as um, essentially like inoculated manifesto, um, although over time, and actually all the the so Tart Noir, which is the black sour, was Solidarity. This was manifesto. Okay, um, but we found that especially in the case of Solidarity, it's already such a small beer that once you've got wild yeast and bacteria doing their thing in there. <laughs> 
it leaves you with like no body. I mean, it, it smelled great and it looked cool and it tasted good, but just so thin. So then we started sort of re-engineering those beers so that it's, you know, to, to make Tart Noir, we make a, about a 5.8 to 6% beer and then let it do its thing. Similarly with Manifesto, um, we didn't necessarily like some of the character you'd get um, as the sort of wild yeast in particular goes through their cycle and work on some of the esters that were left from Manifesto's yeast. It just gets kind of like butyric, yeah, kind of kind of poopy. So we've been experimenting with fermenting this kind of like with the umlaut, like uh, our house ale yeast instead of the Belgian strain, the, the 1272 and really cold. So that it's almost more like a lager. It's already cleaner going into the food or when we take beer out, we only take half. Um, so that's sort of like a Solara hmm. and putting a, Putting a cleaner beer back in, it seems like it sort of speeds the turnaround time. I mean, not that we're in a rush, but it seems like even after three months, the beer's tasting good and kind of ready to do something with, rather than waiting six months, 12 months. No, I think no spices too, right? Yeah, Yeah, we leave out. uh, Manifesto has sort of the traditional coriander. Uh, We do grapefruit uh, zest and lemon zest. Uh, For this one, we leave it out. Um, but we may actually go back to using the other yeast because we've also found that after you get past the sort of poop phase, you get, <laughs> uh, you get some really nice sort of like mango and papaya kind of notes, which I think we achieved in the Zegermeister by actually adding fruit. But at the same time, if you don't have to add fruit, you can get the same sure. thing, then yeah, you know, maybe do it that way. Just missing the complexity up front. Rather than having to, yeah, add I, I think it was it was a little different. So I mean, pretty much everything we do is always sort of subject to revision. But these ones, and it's harder with these because you make one little change and then you might wait three or six or twelve months and then you make another little change and see where it goes. Yeah, um, I, I hate to do this to you, but can we focus on the poop for a second? And uh, <laughs> and and here's yes. why: because I I just want to talk about it because it. So I'm glad that you said butyric acid. And there's another descriptor sometimes that I, I will use, uh, you know, like fecal or whatever. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But n- nobody really likes to talk about that. But it's a goddamn flavor compound that happens in beer. Well, Lee and I both and, have babies now, so that's a big part so of So you our know it, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, well you're also probably yeah. sensitive to the goddamn smell. However, uh, until they eat solid food, it smells way more like yogurt okay. than poop. Just Which <laughs> would be better, oh. by the way. It's way better. Yeah. Yeah. But there you are get st- into an incredible amount of detail about poop uh, aromas when you have babies. Just, <laughs> just putting it out there. I'm sure of it, which <laughs> I so, do not no, look there, forward to. There definitely to. was, you know, like maybe a month or two in after, at, you know, topping up the food or you would get this kind of... What, what I mean, it causes doesn't, it? Is it? It's a byproduct of the wild yeast? I think it's as the, as the wild yeast break down the esters from the other yeast. Okay. just sort of enter this weird... This um, intermediary. It's a little phase. Danger okay. zone. And I mean, it doesn't smell like, like vagrant shit on the... No, I agree. <laughs> it's not like that. This but it, is, it, it's also not something you want to drink. No, right? yeah. and, but it's also for people who don't uh, use flavored... Maybe they're just beer fans. They don't have flavored descriptors. They're not always talking about... Sure. They don't even describe it. They don't know how to describe it. They just taste it and go, okay, that, there's something wrong. There's yeah. something yeah. not good. Yeah. But those of us who have heard it before, we go, oh yeah, it's kind of... Don't be afraid to say it. It's poop. It's duty. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. But so... Okay, so it starts, but it goes away if you let it keep working? Is I that think what's essentially it gets sort of transformed into those mango okay. papaya, the sort of tropical yeah. fruit. Mm-hmm. What kind of time frame are we talking here that you notice this transition? I think in the sixth month yeah. range, uh, okay. more or less, like usually it's done. I mean, it, it's it's hard. Um, it's going to really take some time. It, it may not be exactly the same every single time. Okay. Um, yeah. and e- even beers that are just bread and no bacteria, Sometimes you get that real phenolic, like, garden hose thing, and mm-hmm. other times not so much. Sometimes it goes away fast, and sometimes it kind of lingers. So Yeah. I think it's it's kind of like um, you can kind of draw a comparison to, like, stronger beers or, or beers where there's, like, fusels. And then if you if you give it time, those fusels will break down into esters and, and lower-order alcohols. So it's not like you know, burning hot, but it's, like, warming and a little pleasantly fruity, you know. Kind of like a little bit more round, yeah, and a barley wine, kind of, kind of that idea, and um, but yeah, it's just with the the sour fermentation, the the, the acidic, yeah, contributions. I, I mean, I think that's one of the things that has been nice about the way we've 
we've at least for me the one of the nice things is that the way we've been able to do our program is that um you know kind of letting lee and and eric take over certain realms of of the process um it's it's really helpful because we can kind of each focus in on our own you know uh particular areas of interest or, or specialties sure and 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 not kind of be like just to give you a quick example like the first time i mentioned yearling earlier the first time we were making that beer and it was just kind of a a, a very kind of shoot and aim later kind of a, a scenario where we just put some beer in barrels and see what happens this will be fun yeah um so I think the first time we did that, there was like something like 12 wine barrels worth of beer and we could only end up keeping six of them. Six we had to dump because it was just like, you know. Well, and we we didn't have air conditioning back okay. then. So we had barrels stacked like four high. But if it was 80 degrees at the bottom, it was like 100 and something degrees. Wow. Yeah. Didn't yeah. even think of so that. So those ones just tasted like, like real fingernail polish. Just like yeah. just, even to smell it, you just. Oh, it's okay. Kind of brutal. You just dump it. Uh, so yeah, there, I, I don't think there was anything you could do to rescue that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right. See, not. one of the things that most fascinates me about sour beer, actually all beer, because uh, you know, take a pilsner for example, like when it's fermenting and you smell sulfur and it's terrible, and then later it can be the most refreshing Magical. beer you've ever had. Yes. I love when beers, I don't know, there's something about them tasting bad at one point in their life and then turning into something awesome. Yeah. And sour yeah. beer is so much like that, where mm-hmm. you can go through these phases where you just go, oh, fuck, what happened? <laughs> and, then, and then you wait six months and you go, oh, we nailed it, guys. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I really like talking about that part of beer. Yeah. Oh, and I think it's really gratifying when way later down the road it's good again and I mean it's really exciting. Yeah. These, these are know, definitely, it's like oh it was worth the wait. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a beer that's worthy of the patience, you know, to eventually put into packaging and you know, just have this magical product. Right. You know, th- that's a point too though is it is kind of magical cuz like you said, sometimes at the sometimes you're patient and at the end it's not gratifying at all. You, yeah. you go, oh, <laughs> damn right. it. Yeah. You know, I, I like to think about, like, just the way that people talk about beer in in a general sense is, you know, you, you get a lot of the 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 talk about oh it's a it's an art but it's a science and and that kind of interaction which both are true obviously yeah um um and and you know you if you apply it to say cooking you can you can have like a food science trained chef that's totally nerdy and does these crazy things with chemicals and gets food to do things that you've never seen before can't even imagine yeah but then you can have grandma's cooking and it's just like man you add a little bit of this a little bit of that and it tastes amazing yes and um you know i think kind of uh in in this process too like i I don't know if if uh you know or if like a lot of people know lee is a really talented artist and and um you know in the the visual medium but also you know i feel like that sensibility can apply to the the kind of sensory uh application of of these things that are less exact and and you might not have a a certain definition for say like oh this is a particular mash temperature or a certain ph level but you get a sense of of all of the many elements that are interacting to create this final um you know product or this final final piece or whatever you want to call it um and and so you know in that sense i i feel like Lee has a good uh, understanding of these elements interacting and then just knowing, okay, well, I think we're going to get to here with this or, yeah. or knowing like we're here <laughs> or we're not sure. here <laughs> and kind of, you know, being in that sense, um, steering the, the, the ship for these, these sort of beers. Uh, it's a little bit more, 
uh, abstract in a way, I guess, of, of a sense of making beer. Or it's almost like, well, we did this and we got that. And remembering and noticing that, kind of like, you know. Well, I think you get it. So I think a big part of that to me is you get a feel for it. And you, and you, yeah. you just it's more than just the science of the art, but you actually get a feel for what you're doing. But I do like your parallel to an artist if, if you're good. I don't know what your medium exactly is, but if it were paint, you know, for example, um, sure, you know that when you put, you know, these two colors together, it's going to make the other color. But there's a whole bunch of in between that I think is a, you just have to feel it and know it and know what all those different little components do. Yeah. Which which is perfect for sour beer because there's so many different components, uh, you know. Well, you do all the the label work. Uh, and my it, right? brother yeah. and I, he moved, so he used to do all of it. But now, sometimes I don't feel like waiting for him to do it. So <laughs> some of it. Uh, so Look at the fish. like he did that one, and actually. We re-released Equinox. This is really or, cool. Or we're doing it now in, in 375s, and he updated the art for that, and I think it looks actually even way, way yeah. better than that. So one. he did Equinox. That's um, a beautiful label. He yeah. did. Yeah, uh, really nice, yeah. I did the Zest, and then we did uh, we did for Christmas. We did this beer called All Your Oat. I did that one. And I was I thought it looked cool. Um, yeah. You know, so it was fun. It was I'm also really... a nice diversion from. Everything else. We I'm really excited math. for uh, <laughs> for the Day Trip series, the first release out of that, which yeah. Leroy did, and uh, it's a fantastic label. Well, thank you. You guys have always had good branding, even even since the beginning. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, that thanks, uh, but I think also that that's a you know, it's just been the Bukowski boys. I mean, uh, Lee and Andrew came in when we were in the construction phase, and I was still figuring out asses and elbows and, and, um, you know, they were just, you know, homebrewing buddies and guys to be like, Hey, cool. You're doing this. This looks cool. Same with Eric. Like we were all homebrewers at the same time and, and in that same community. Um, but you know, that it just kind of came in to be like, what are you doing? This looks cool. We can help. Here's what we are good at and we can do this. And let's, so it was like, yeah, great. Yeah. Sounds good. Pick up a shovel. Let's get to it. <laughs> um, also, we should point out it's actually you guys' fault that we quit like perfectly good day jobs. Cause I mean, when I indeed. used to commute 30 hour, uh 30 minutes each way, I listened to like every, sh- at the time the it session. was like the session and uh, the, Jamil uh, Bruce Strong. Oh yeah. Well, no, what was the the classic styles? Uh, brewing the style. Brewing 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 brewing. Brewing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Through all of that stuff, and you know, it went from like this cool hobby to like I don't. Know, this is all I want to talk about. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I figure out a way to do it more. Oh, I'm glad so, we could help or hurt oh, or whatever we did. <laughs> <laughs> what did we do? Tell us in a few years. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Don't answer that now. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. I think then we knew you Jerry as uh, Porn Stage Lee, didn't we? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Where's, uh, where's Dr. Scott? He was the first that. one that I met out of the whole, yeah, whole crew. Yeah, he had a long weekend. Um, <laughs> he's still yeah. up. I, oh, I, did he? I, None I, of us have a long weekend. I know. I called him today. And he's like, yeah, I don't have much personality. Nah. I've been awake for three days. So. Augustina Baruna. Yeah. 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 He spent all weekend with her. going to go the other way. Yeah. So maybe it's a him. We never actually we, clarified. Oh, we don't know? We don't oh. know. We don't know. He said, oh. he's like, I'm going to go the other way with it. Augustina Baruna. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just come out right now? The know. other way. Yeah. 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 Gotta go the other way. <laughs> it all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Somewhere. Equinox and then Zagermeister, right? Am I getting this right? Right. So um, Zagermeister is based on Equinox, or at least it started as that. Equinox out of the fooder okay. with uh, pluots and mangoes. Um, I mean, one of the things in general we do with beer is I think we all want a certain sense of balance, like. Maybe that's why we do a 3.8% uh, yeah. lower ABV beers. I like the idea that you can have several and still be functional. So with the sour beers in general, we kind of try to keep them a little more balanced as well. I know it's kind of the American way to like take the IPA approach, like <laughs> make it like so sour that your teeth come out. And, Melt, you know. yeah. Um, and so I think with Equinox especially now, I mean, it, there's – Tartness there, but it's not so sour that it will hurt you. Uh, with Zegermeister, <laughs> we kind of went, kind of went the other way. I figured, like, hopefully we could get some really good sourness out of the pluots, um, which is essentially like a plum. Yeah, you it's really a, get it's a fancy the, uh, plum. You really yeah, get okay. um, skins. And then we wanted mango because there's been times in Equinox where we've had really good, like, strong mango notes. The, I don't think the mango came through so much, but you definitely get from the skin of the pluot. You get, I mean, can 
two, comparing the two side by side, you definitely get a different sense of like tartness. Yeah. Like even thinking about biting into the skin of a pluot makes yeah. my mouth yeah. like it does. Yeah, it just right. Right. Yeah. 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 because it, is, yeah. it has like such a real and it's awesome tartness too, even just in the fruit. So I know exactly what you mean by in the yeah. beer. So you put like whole. Uh, we kind of cut them in half and then cut them in quarters and. We um, like to do things that involve extra work yeah. and a lot more. <laughs> Whenever sensible. possible. Yeah. Sensibly be a thing to do. So, yeah, yeah. whatever so, is going to be extra work. You're like, that's you know, we, we could be home by 6 tonight, <laughs> yeah. but what if we didn't get home until <laughs> 1 a.m.? I think, what if, guys, what if let's we skin do these it. and then put the skins in 10 hours afterward? <laughs> yeah. I think we started at 8. And finished at five thirty on that day. Okay. Just, then that, but that was just straight. We, I mean, that was that straight, was straight that was just fruiting, fruiting of the yeah, we, we Take the pit out. I and came in and these guys were fruiting, fruit. and I left and they were fruiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, just, I tried not to stay around too long that day. I don't blame I you. didn't want to get sucked into the fruiting. No, you know man. what I mean? No. It's very diverse. It's like you know, <laughs> oh, I got meetings at the other end of town. <laughs> yeah. guys, I'll be back with all uh, the. Go ahead. Oh, with all the handling of the fruit and cutting it and everything, did you guys sulfite the fruit before adding it, or no, just whatever you know what? was we didn't on the do, fruit went in? We didn't do anything. We nope. didn't wash the fruit. We just oh, we rinsed it, but we didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> So he's really like, I didn't wash the fruit. fruit. I was yeah. Yeah, just it I in. Mean, I didn't even wash my hands. from Columbia that morning, and we just, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, even. you know how rogue did that uh, beard brew? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Lee was doing the same thing here with the old uh, the mustache. <laughs> my hands yeah. are up. Kidding, kidding, <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. They really, wasn't no, that. we just kind of right. wanted to see like maybe what would come in on the fruit. Yeah. Um, so, mm-hmm. oh, but the other thing is. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned, but Floyd Zager is the the farmer, the the man that actually uh, perfected the the pluot. Okay, and that's why the name is Zager Meister. Zager Meister, yeah. Is this so? It, this is available in bottles for people. It's to about buy, to be. Okay. Um, they're pretty much ready to go. It, it, this one bottle conditioned a little different. We used a different yeast, and it behaved a little differently, so we weren't sure. Okay, um, but it's pretty close to being ready. So. And how did you find out about Floyd Zagermeister? Did you were you just curious where the hell this pluot came from? So you or uh, Jerry. is there some connection? Well, uh, so we our second location, uh, 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 sort of auxiliary to the brewery is um, is Eagle Rock Brewery Public House, um, which is the restaurant. It's about four miles down the road from the brewery. Oh, cool. And uh, my brother-in-law, Jerry, is uh, he's like a, a classically trained chef, um, really talented guy that uh, runs that, that kitchen. And so, you know, we, we try to go to the farmer's market with him as much as possible and just kind of have fun and also just kind of see the, the interaction. So Lee, Lee went over uh, with him a couple of times. It, it's really early in the morning, so it's, it's harder for us to kind of get over there. It's like, and, a, like the but, legit... Like for restaurants, farmers market. Oh wow! Not it's, not like the weekend. Like, the Santa Monica like, farmers market. I'm in which, my yoga pants yeah, and I need to go yeah. buy some lettuce. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. There's with no my churros, frappuccino no, and yeah. juicy yeah. pants. <laughs> yeah. No, this is like dudes fighting over parking spots at six in the morning. Well, it's, oh, like, it's like all. It's like the who's who of like the L.A. like chef Culinary. like high end scene. Like wow. I'm like oh, I've seen that guy on TV. Holy, shit. <laughs> yeah. I know that guy. Nice, oh. but um, Wearing but yeah, yoga so pants. Jerry, Jerry told us. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lee was going over there to scout out some some fruits to add to some sour beers and to do some cool projects with. And so Jerry, you know, he, Lee was like, "Oh, these these look really awesome, and these taste great." And uh, so Jerry was like, "Oh, you know," told him about Zager, the the guy that that came up the farmer that came up with the, the plua and he's actually still uh living breathing and thriving and, and still has a, pluotting he's still pluotting <laughs> and, and many other fruiting um yeah, but yeah he's credited with introducing the america people to uh kiwi the band uh, america is that yes, he, the band america, yeah. <laughs> he the gave them their home. first kiwi yeah. you didn't know that yeah. uh really yeah. Yeah, apparently he's like had his hand in a lot of these weird Fucking strange fruits that we have. He's the fruit guy. He's still yeah. doing like eighty nine. Liz and Modesto. Well, he he does he does it with not just like you know splicing plants and stuff, but he takes like a little makeup brush and takes the he's like a like a bee, like a big bee, and just <laughs> takes pollen from he one. Where's that? Does he wear a is he like a, yeah. on Chespirito? <laughs> 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 
lástima. Ay, qué lástima. Ay, Dios mío. Wow. Or like uh, the <laughs> blind like melon a, song. A bee. Yeah, a bee. Big yeah bee. like the the little girl and the he's that but, guy. But yeah, I mean, a legend, a legend in the in the produce industry. This guy is like revered as you did as a, as a rock in 1995. Star. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. For, yeah. For, yeah. For, uh, 93 yeah. actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna stop talking. Yeah. Now. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Is is a, did he just get an apricot and a plum tree to have sex? Is that how a pluot came? About? Well, you, you know, know but, but you don't just you don't you don't just have them have sex. You gotta like talk. You kind of gotta like warm them oh, up. You gotta yeah. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta to know each other. Yeah, you gotta yeah. dress up they like don't, a they don't just like you know. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta put on some fucking Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Yeah. Wine them and dine them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You gotta get out yeah, your you makeup brushes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, smell the flower and smell it. Yeah, good, good. Now what about the leaves? Nice. Yeah. Right. You look guys look good together. You, know good. you should come over to this tree over here. <laughs> you, guys, yeah. you guys should make some fruit. Uh, <laughs> right now, he's uh, developing an app. Uh, <laughs> they pollinate left. Swipe pollinate. right on this guy. Right. Yeah, it's gonna be Open good. pollination. Yeah. <laughs> so both of these beers are, are awesome. The Zagermeister is way my speed. Awesome. Uh, such a mm-hmm. great fruit flavor in there. The right amount of... Uh, I know you're... you're you, before we of course interrupted you you started talking about like the a little more balance and not just so much in your face but this is very tart like i like it yeah this one and, is but more it's not ripping like, the enamel off my teeth like the idea was to you know we knew well or we hoped that the the pluots themselves would add some tartness and yeah. then adding more sugar back maybe would kind of wake everything back up that was in there get a little more fermentation get drier maybe you know, lower the pH a little bit. Which it um, did, all of those things? The, you know, I don't feel like we got a ton out of the mangoes, but also it was the end of the season, and the mangoes, most of them, we got, like, seconds, which is cool because they would probably go in the trash anyway. So not only is it cheaper, but you're able to, like, use some fruit that otherwise nobody what wants. Um, but a lot of them were, like, hard as rocks, man. Yeah. They, I don't... Mm. More sp- well, um, more we had the, we had the spectrum. It was there were some were hard as rocks, and then there were some that you could just like squish with your yeah. Those were awesome. Hand. You just squish oh. it right into the <laughs> right into the right. processor. Yeah. <laughs> nice. um, so I, you know, I wouldn't mind if we got a little more mango out of it, but you know, we'll do it again and sure get different mango. Well, it's there. I mean, I definitely taste the mango, and mm-hmm. um, that just the the tartness I'm saying is just right from the, from the Thank pluot you. too. Yeah. So you. I really like that. Uh, good to know. I keep the skins. Make sure the skins yeah, go in there. I, I think that's the best. That's the part that you really want. So those you cut up and just threw in the pluots. Well, we, we brought like a small food processor, so cut it up enough to get the, uh, uh, the pit out or the pit. Yeah, yeah the out. Pit stone, um, or whatever. And then we figured by pureeing it, maybe we could speed the process up slightly. I mean, if it was a whole chunk, then it's going to be that much longer to kind of yeah. fall apart in the barrel. So. Well, just from the standpoint of um, getting it into the barrels... Well, there's that, too. Oh, Uh, I see. The opening is only so big. Yeah. Good Uh, point. Okay. So get it all chopped up or pureed. All right. Uh, What size uh, food processor are we talking here? Just my my wife's. Yeah, um, okay. That I took without asking. <laughs> You're right. Hope yeah. she's not listening right now. <laughs> I brought it back cleaner than when we got it. Yeah. Okay. Then. You so, didn't burn out the motor? No, harm no, no, no. It just kind of went in, like, bursts. Um, yeah. The pub has, like, one of those awesome robo-coups, but yeah. they needed it, so I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't use it. Wait, so let me get this, we skipped over that sort of quickly. You have a restaurant now. Yeah. So Eric still has to shovel 2,000 pounds <laughs> right. of a grain out, but you have you have a, your. Uh, uh, what restaurant. was the next beer we're gonna go? <laughs> yeah. 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 I think we're gonna keep the show moving, right? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta move on here. here. Yeah. 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 Commercial break. I think yeah. we're yeah. time for a break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was a restaurant your idea? A lot of brewers I know, uh, you either start as a brew pub or you never have. Like a restaurant's a whole other animal. Boy. Yeah, I mean, the original idea was actually to have a brew pub. Um, I see. But, you know, I, my dad and I both uh, just kind of resigned to the fact that we didn't know shit about the restaurant industry or any of that. And, yeah. and you know, what we knew about was beer, and that's what we wanted to, to do. Sure. Well, then your lovely wife, Ting, Ting, didn't she know about the restaurant business? Oh, right. Yeah, right. There yeah, yeah. So she, she has, uh, her family has owned restaurants in, in South Florida for probably about 30 years. Um wow. And, uh, 
yeah, her mom finally just retired uh, like about two years ago. Um, but yeah, so, so they grew up in the restaurant, restaurant industry, but you know, in the early stages, um, she was, Ting, my wife was still doing her day job because she had to pay the bills hmm. and, and the brewery's bills when we, <laughs> 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 right. a lot of bills, you know, uh, All of the bills. and uh, because I, I just had to completely quit the, the day job and, and, um, focus on the brewery. So, um, so yeah, anyways, d- to not get too sidetracked, I guess your question was about the the restaurant. Um, that was the original idea, and then we kind of abandoned that um, kind of quickly after realizing the the startup costs yeah. for that, and also the, the just the risk. Like, yep, we don't know about this, but we know about beer, so let's at least make beer, and we can talk to people about beer and yeah. be intelligent about it, and and that. So, um, so yeah, then. After, you know, being open for a, a number of years and, and feeling some level of success, you know, we decided, well, and also it kind of coincided with, with my brother-in-law, Jerry, sort of coming of age and graduating from, um, from culinary school and already having uh, some experience in, in good kitchens around the country. He worked for uh, Momofuku Sambar oh, wow. for David Chang over in New York. He worked for... Uh, Thomas Keller at Bouchon up in um, up in Yountville. Um, That's great. Worked for a, a Del Dado winery, pretty nice uh, winery up up in Napa. Doing Love their, Del Taco. Their catering, yeah, Del Taco. <laughs> Del, <laughs> Del Taco. We have a winery now, yeah, by the way. It. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. No. Um, Screw top, it's great. Yeah, sangria, yeah. it's awesome. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then down for uh, Son of a Gun down in L.A. for for a while. Um, uh, from John and Vinny, uh, those those guys are the owners of that place. So, so yeah, it's kind of like that kind of uh, coincided, and then this amazing building that we had had our eye on for years hmm. back before the brewery even opened. We thought this would be great if this someone could put a brewery in this building. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so that you know, dumb yeah. dumb luck or whatever. We just like it was on the market, and we're like, let's go for it. Um, the original idea was to put a small brew house in the back of that building. Okay. And it just proved to be – so we have the restaurant operating in the front half of the building and then getting the, the permitting and, and the entitlements for the, the brewing side, which I don't know. Maybe someday we'll feel like we have the, the money and patience to deal with it. Okay. Um, but we just felt like, man, this, not now. We, we can't. So LA it. is still very difficult to deal with other because I remember you had a lot oh, yeah. of difficulty right. even with the first. You guys are the master of the conditional use permit, uh, right? Well, I, I, would, yeah, I wouldn't call us the masters. I'd call us the slave. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But I would have thought you've already laid that groundwork. Do they not know you enough yeah, by yeah. now that right. uh, it's still the you same? You know, huh? it just it doesn't matter. I, I mean, they don't okay. care. Yeah. 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 LA is yeah. such. A, uh, you look at like Torrance or Monroe. I mean, look how many awesome breweries are in Torrance now. Okay, yeah, I mean, and and yeah. Uh, the, the leaders of that city LA actually care, speak up and say, and Anaheim too. Like the yeah, mayor of yeah. Anaheim is, he's a huge fan of the the Noble Brewery, and you know those guys. He's really proud to. to Which makes awful beer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's I was just horrible. thinking that the guys have it's shitty personalities. <laughs> 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 and and also strike also too. Yeah. So yeah. you know, yeah. at least the mayor's yeah. rooting for them. Yeah, yeah. Brosif. Thank There's God. You know, <laughs> There's always flies landing. I mean. <laughs> They're this close to a strike three, but um, right. So far, they're okay. But yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's the trouble with the city of LA. It's sort of like they're not suddenly going to go. Oh yeah, you guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. We get it now. We get it. We just remember. It's just bureaucracy, like, and everybody. Take a number. Is, everybody. Shame. Everybody is good at making themselves look important to this bureaucracy yeah so, yeah i mean any little tiny thing you try to do they're like nope. nope nope i mean honestly what a shame this building sort of seduced us back to working with the city of la because we were just so <laughs> done we're like no next Never. location no yeah nope, nope and then we're like oh it's so pretty this is so <laughs> nice it's open now, the restaurant? The restaurant is open. We're going to uh, – we're in the process, and we're almost completed with uh, 
putting the, the back half of the building into use as the the site of the Woodworks project that Lee was talking about. Okay. And that's uh, what he's sort of shepherding over is, is the barrel aging, but out of the brew house and kind of trying to get that, free up some space there. Yeah. It seems like the last two years or so, we've just, every expansion project, we've been like, here's what we're going to do. And then... Sounds <laughs> 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 like BNA eleven planning. <laughs> <laughs> and ten and nine and eight. We know what we should do. <laughs> Fuck it. Shit. <laughs> yeah. That happens. So I'm uh, out of uh, superstition. I'm just not going to talk about the next expansion. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to do this. We're going to take another quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll taste some more beer. We've got another side-by-side to do with Zess, right? The yeah, other Z beer. The others. Um, and then uh, you were talking about Tarte Noir. We have that to try. Uh, we got a few things left to do. So hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back with Eagle Rock. You're listening to the Brewcasters, the Brewcasters. on the Brewing Network. With over 20 years of experience making world-class craft beer and more than 100 gold medals in international competitions, Moylan's Brewing Company is not just a pretty face in craft beer. Just ask Brendan Moylan. What do we got here? The beer of the hour. Moylan's, gotta love that big M. It's like a sign of awesomeness. It's got an extra kick to it. Let's pour this bad boy. Oh, Easy oh yeah. Oh, Moylan's. The end of the night when the kids are finally in bed, the wife's in bed, <laughs> nobody's bothering your ass anymore. That's Moylan's time. Moylan's is for you. Yeah. It's to help you out. Yeah. It helps me out. What? Well, because it's freaking awesome. Northern California brewed. It's brewed with love. With love? Oh, yeah. Tremendous. And it's always best where? Moylan's. You've got to try it on tap at Moylan's. In Novato. They're friggin' awesome. Not only because I own the brewery, because I love the beer. Cheers! Boom! Kilt Lifter Scotch Ale takes big beers to a whole new level with rich malt balanced perfectly with delicate hops and now comes in four pack tall boy cans so you can take the party on the go. Or come to the brewery, take a tour, and try any of Moylan's fresh creations right from the source. Check them out at Moylan's.com. When I order a beer, I want my server to know more about it than I do. I want someone who enjoys good beer and loves helping others enjoy it, too. I want someone who knows how to pour a perfect pint for every beer style. I want a Cicerone. The Cicerone Certification Program is creating the type of people who help you enjoy great beer. Home brewers and craft beer lovers know beer is more flavorful and complex than ever, and it takes some serious knowledge to store and serve beer right. Cicerones know beer. There are three levels in the Cicerone Program. Certified Beer Server, Certified Cicerone, and Master Cicerone. Cicerones are truly the sommeliers of beer. The best beer locations have a certified Cicerone on staff. Relaxed and unpretentious. Cicerones are tested on storing and serving beer, beer styles, flavor and tasting, the brewing process and ingredients, and pairing food with beer. Learn more about your next beer guide at Cicerone.org. Certified Cicerone, because it takes top talent to present a perfect pint. Hey, this is Brandon from Drake's Brewing Company, here to talk to you about our Hop Chef Champion Brewer Competition. Hop Chef Champion Brewer Competition. Fifteen awesome California breweries are joining us on Saturday, April 16th from 2 to 5 p.m. at Drake's Dealership in Uptown Oakland. Each brewery is bringing a tasty brand new beer made with a randomly selected unique ingredient, including everything from ginger to juniper berries. Tickets are just 25 bucks and include a collectible glass, a punch card to try all 16 brews, and you, the beer drinker, gets to decide the winner. Saturday, April 16th, we bring the beer, you be the judge, and see who will be crowned the next Hop Chef champ. For more information, check out drinkdrakes.com. Your support of the Brewing Network means everything to us. We couldn't produce shows without you. And we love giving you something extra for that support, like... 
Brew Your Own magazine. You already know it's a great brewing magazine full of recipes, equipment how-tos, discussions of beer styles, and brewing techniques. Whether you're new to brewing and just starting out or you're an old pro, you'll always learn something from the articles in Brew Your Own. Plus, there are amazing special issues like plans for building a Brutus 10 system, 250 classic clone recipes, and the Home Brewer's Answer Book. Brew Your Own magazine and BYO.com are awesome resources for any brewer. Whether for yourself or as a gift, when you subscribe or resubscribe from the Brewing Network homepage, you directly support programs like this. Get a great magazine and support the Brewing Network. Subscribe to Brew Your Own right from the thebrewingnetwork.com. Grog tags aren't just for labeling your home brews to hand out to your friends. They're the perfect way to round out your personal brewing marketing. Bringing your latest beer to a funeral? Craft a metal sign to go with it. Heading out to Little Liam's Bar Mitzvah? Grog Tag custom bottle caps are awesome. Couldn't get out of jury duty this year? Grog Tag the hell out of the deliberation room with reusable labels. Grog Tag has an awesome array of products just waiting to be customized by you. Metal signs, coasters, tasting mats, bottle caps, tap handles. It's all there waiting for your designs at Grog Tag. Liven up your next party with the widest selection of custom products ever offered by a sponsor of the Brewing Network. Grog Tag. At least your beer will look good. A few things happened 30 years ago. Arfanet migrated to TCPIP and the internet was born. Revenge of the Jedi was renamed Return of the Jedi and opened in theaters. Mila Kunis and Emily Blunt were born, beginning a fantasy in my mind but all of that pales next to the fact that hop tech opened its doors and began blowing home brewers right out of their mash tons hop tech doesn't fuck around real people shipping awesome shit straight to you their new website is fast and easy to navigate or just call 800-379-4677 and let badass bitch jade and the gadget guy roberto blow their warm load of customer service all over you So visit the site or visit the store in Dublin, California, and support those that support you. Get your brewing on at hoptech.com. Tampa Bay has become a great destination for craft beer lovers with more than 60 breweries and counting, like Cigar City, Tampa Bay, and Copper Tail Brewing. One of the newest breweries is Four Stacks Brewing Company in Apollo Beach. Four Stacks believes that the West Coast can't have all the fun. So while we feature West Coast beer like Stone, Ballast Point, and Green Flash on tap, we also brew hopped up ales to our liking in the West Coast style, even as they're truly Florida. Come in and see for yourself. Four Stacks hosts monthly homebrew club meetings, bottle shares, and partners with local restaurants for free food delivery while you enjoy your pint in their new town. Room. Stop by Four Stacks Brewing and support the greater Tampa Bay craft beer scene at a brand new community oriented independent brewery. Four Stacks Brewing, bringing the best of the West Coast style and attitude. Four Stacks Brewing Company in Apollo Beach, Florida. You're listening to the Brewing Network. Because like beer, radio shouldn't suck. Okay, so welcome back to the program. Thanks for hanging out with us. We have the boys from Eagle Rock in the studio, which is a lot of fun because we are getting some killer beer out of this. I don't have to drive home tonight, so I'm even more excited about that. I just doubled up. I ordered a, a Happy Hops from Russian River to go alongside my Eagle Rock beers. I got to um, I gotta just comment on that whole thing. Isn't it kind of awesome that we're in this, like phase of good beer right now that it's like you can be like oh i just ordered a happy hops from russian <laughs> river and i'm having a you know like yeah this awesome like <laughs> i agree with crazy you. light hoppy delicious beer from altamont and you know like yes just, just, it's awesome it's i'm awesome happy and so half the time i feel super blessed that we're in the location that we are in the bay area because there are so many great breweries so I, I know that there are still parts of the country that don't have quite that many 
But we are still just in a great time for craft beer because almost every part of the country has some sort of great beer happening where you just go, you know, even if it's not made locally, just craft beer in general. Yeah. I agree with you. And you know what's weird is there, there's so much negative talk right now because of the buyouts and because of how many breweries are opening and all of that. But sometimes we forget to just go, but wait a second. We're in, like, the best time ever for ever. beer. Absolutely. In ever. history. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was thinking about this um, actually just this morning, oddly enough, um, as I was bouncing my baby, trying to get him to go back to sleep. <laughs> thinking about beer. <laughs> yeah. I <recognize> nice. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I was, I was, um, I was thinking about, because I, I was just recently interviewed – um, and specifically, the the interviewer is asking me about you know the beer scene in LA and kind of all the buyouts and Golden Road and all this and was it good or bad and you know it just the more I thought about it after the fact I thought of what I should have said would have been great of course, <laughs> of course yeah um, but no I was just thinking about how you know I don't know necessarily if it's good or bad. But more than that, it, it sort of demonstrates just the maturity of the industry that we're in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of thinking about it in the sense of, like, um, like the music industry and, and drawing those parallels to, like, when you, you know, you get into a, a certain band or a certain scene and you're like, oh, this is really cool. It's underground and nobody knows about it. Um, yeah. And when I first moved out to LA, I was really into the rave scene and like going to these <laughs> what? clubs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. Big like shocker, right? <laughs> yeah. So I almost <laughs> opened an ecstasy pub, but Yo. instead I went <laughs> beer medicinal, called MDMA. Medicinal ecstasy. Would have been craft ecstasy. Okay? <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Come on, guys. All Molly all the time for a <laughs> sellout. No. 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 Um, <laughs> <laughs> I used to, maybe, I, I don't know. I thought I could. Um, but yeah, so like the whole underground thing was, was cool because you were like, oh, I'm part of this thing and not, you know, nobody knows about it, but it's really cool. And my friends that are into it, like we're, we're getting, you know, we're kind of really pushing it and, you know, yeah. you, you kind of, you get into your own world absorbed. And uh, I, I kind of feel like that's what we've collectively done as a industry or as a a subsection of an industry sort of this underground beer industry yeah craft beer and and we've kind of proudly worn that badge of like craft as being underground or alternative or whatever you want to call it and then you know now you know the big guys are of course you know wrangling that in under their 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 guys and kind of saying well we have craft too and <laughs> now craft is a segment that is part of the grocery scan data yeah that you know the big industry in general pharmaceuticals and and you know big mcdonald's you know, mcdonald's potato <laughs> chips all those big things is so we're part of that now right and it's just sort of i think the acceptance that we are part of a mature industry and the the sort of identity crisis of like, you know, we still want to be the cool, independent, uh, alternative, you know, scene, and and we still are as much as we want to be, but sure. but just kind of acknowledging that, well, yeah, you know, the adults are now aware of what we're doing. And they think it's cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, well, uh, or that you had to act a little bit, a little bit like an adult to go further as well. And by you, I mean all of you in the collective. Craft beer, collectively, our yeah. company too. I think I actually really like. I've been reading that word maturity a lot recently because of what's happening in craft beer, and I really like it. I like it for two reasons: for one, because I just think it's accurate, and two, I used to think, don't go into business unless you know everything that you're doing, right. But that's not what we did in the crap beer industry. It's not what I did with the Brewing Network. And I always felt like, well, that's because I'm slow and dumb. But it, it, <laughs> but a lot of things that end up where they end up, people didn't know what the fuck they were doing in the but beginning. And that's okay. Um, yeah. right. Are you, right, or you maybe yeah. never do it. And so I, it sort of it feels a little bit validating that it was okay that I went in blindly and that, that maybe sure. you went in blindly. and that. But because we were passionate enough and, and maybe in some cases smart enough, but probably in most cases just hardworking just enough. Just dumb enough. We're dumb enough. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> we, we actually did take cues from other business, and we watched what was happening, and so we did mature. And so now you see these little companies like Ballast Point or Ailsmith, I think, is a really cool example. Uh, there's a there's a hundred great examples of these people who really matured as business people, too. And took craft like to this whole other level, right? And, yeah, I mean, and that had to happen. Otherwise, you know, we were always just going to be the garage band. And how long would that really last? Right. Yeah. So right. uh, there's still that aspect of it, which is cool. But we had to mature. And I just really like it. I think it's a very accurate term for what ha- what's happening to craft beer. And it makes me kind of proud of the people in it. Like some of these guys I've known for 10 years, they were totally, in yeah. their garage like I was in my garage. And now they're opening, you know, 200,000 square foot uh, breweries. Yeah, I look think at, that's cool. Look at Sully, like Sully, dude. Oh, oh man, Jesus, that place Hell is yeah, insane. Man. Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> right? It's yeah. insane. Sully is a perfect example of that of what I mean. I'm really proud of these guys because I just feel like shit. Look what you've done, you know, by yeah. paying attention and, and growing. Well, I think too, like just kind of collectively, you know, it's important for us to all acknowledge that it's part of this, and it's not like we can't sit here and poo poo it for too long. Like, man, we're no, we're we're standing alternative on our own here it's like right. no and it, you know when when ballast point is making these beers that's now owned by you know corona effectively and sure. and putting them in cans and putting them in grocery stores or whoever it is that's you know sam adams is doing this and that and now doing these these craft basically smearing off ice but craft mm, putting a craft, craft ice on it. Right. So, yeah. craft yeah. ice i love craft, it yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I just, I think it's like you can, and everyone's, there's certainly going to be the people that poo poo it for a, a, you know, forever. Like there's, and there will be negative aspects of it, but I think uh, thus far, uh, the overall impact is I'm just proud of these guys. Yeah, I agree. I I I think it's a cool thing to see. But I think a traditional craft is just a a element and it's still here. You're, you're that. Uh, It's just a, it's a something looking for a name. People threw India out there. I don't know what that has to do with it. But I like original uh, microbrew. You know, you are like a, a small-time yeah. brewer. Yeah. You know, micro, you know p- microbrewers make craft. So does big craft. Well, it might be akin to as well, like like if you're drawing the comparison to music, like punk. Like, you know, punk at the time it was developing was just an anti... It was a counterculture thing. It was, let's do things that are not what are established and let's shock people and 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 you know in a way craft beer is was that or you know whatever you want to call it now you know craft yeah. I, I guess it's not your dad's beer right no, not having to be your dad's right beer. Yeah. unless it's that root beer but then the other thing too is <laughs> which um, still isn't your dad's oh, that's beer. Right. still it's not right yeah, yeah. So, so, they that. but like yeah. i've yeah. been at festivals recently where the the people coming up to to on the other side of the jockey box are like they don't know what I'm talking about when I say Bud Light or Coors. They're yeah, like, and I'm like, are you serious? They're like, well, I've never had Bud Light. Wow, and you're like, I know. How amazing what? is that? <laughs> They're like, no, my dad drank, you know, Sam Adams in yeah. Sierra Nevada. It's crazy. Yeah. By the way, I'm 10, cool. and I don't need beer anymore. Mind <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. sorry to. Was that your baby I that we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, by the way, I've had the Brewing Network on Pro Brewer for six months at three hundred fifty dollars, and no one's no one's buying it. I don't know what's happening. The whole thing, or just one share. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah. you put it on his market bottom down. Brewing Network really bottomed out. <laughs> gotta, I think you got to put it on his craft brewing network. Then it'll really micro brewing, brewing uh, craft micro indie, network. Yeah, yeah. indie yeah. brewing, indie no. micro. Network. This is all marketing. You're right. <laughs> you change it. <laughs> all right, so we have two more beers in our glass, and I believe there are two versions of of Zess, right? So, yeah. uh, what is this? Uh, we did it what as our uh, anniversary beer this year. Uh, uh, we yum. share an anniversary with Strand and Ladyface. So, originally the idea was to get everybody to sort of brew a similar beer, and then, like, what do, do we blend them together, or how do we? Uh, and it it was a little tricky. Essentially, we ended up brewing uh, Ladyface brew one. Strand had just. Uh, Undergone a huge uh, expansion, so they yeah they <laughs> yeah. couldn't. It's okay uh, if they touch. They couldn't produce a beer, um, but they came up and you know helped out when we brewed. But essentially, it's a, a golden strong, and the idea was to release the clean version in kegs and then the sort of dirty version with Brett in bottles. Okay. Um, 
I don't think the breaded version. I mean, it's not where we want it to be yet. Um, I've had it yet. I've had some where there's a lot of bread in the nose, not so much in the uh, in the mouth yet. In this particular case, I don't think there's a huge distinction. The sweetness is sort of different between the two, but it's not really. You like know, it, it's bread. It, it's there. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. definitely it, the aroma. I, I mean, but it's not heavy. In a perfect world, I yeah. wanted to sort of have that like. Or vol, like where you open yeah. it and you're like, oh, it's, this is a good one. You know? Okay. Um, so it's not there yet, but the idea was maybe you buy a couple and you, on the label, it says try it in like six days, six weeks, six months. So that happens um, in the bottle, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the Brett was oh. only add, uh, added yeah, in the bottle? Only the, yeah. Well, technically, okay. there's a couple kegs that we, we did, but. Yeah, we held on to meaning there's no Brett in the fermenter. It, right, it was right, right. Just, right. just like we uh, did the clean beer and then inoculated that tank with bread and then did a little bottling run cool okay yeah. so hopefully uh as it continues to age it just sort of gets better and better and better is this on the shelf for people now people can buy this it is, yes, it is. the zess okay uh, are you only in california or yeah okay northern california too yeah you are All a little right. bit draft a little bit draft yeah. primarily yeah. up here newly up okay. here yeah so we can get you guys all the time here at the hop grenade on draft you could oh sweet true. Yeah. yeah i love that all right. So both of these, I think, are awesome beers. I like that the Brett's a little subtle right now. I think it's good advice to keep it and, and try it at different intervals. Because right that now was, it's yeah. already good. Oh, I'd yeah. love to see what happens in a few months. That was part yeah. of the fun and the idea of the beer. I mean, I you know, definitely wanted to get a little sort of not necessarily drier, but that sort of perception of like a little drier, a little more leathery, like not super funky weird, but just like a little more... Orval like, mm-hmm. um, so I think there's I'll, enough of those super yeah. funky weird beers. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, and, and, yeah. you know, I, I don't think there's enough of the of the beers that have a, a, a lighter bread. To it. Well, I'll tell you the the non bread version of the zest, just the Belgian Golden Strong, is one of the best Golden Strongs I've had in a very wow. long time. Thank, Thank you very yeah, much. You don't like I Belgian beers. Much. I do not like yeah. Belgian beers very much, and the Golden Strong, I the guess, Belgian style. It's sorry. one that I I can drink on occasion, but it yeah. still tends to be a little too estery for me, a little too yeah. strong. Yeah. Uh, for that matter, are sweet, but this yeah. is really dry. But this yeah. is none of those things. Yeah, this is a uh, this is our house strain. Okay. Our house. The uh, well, well, sorry, no, uh, well, thirty six fifty five. We use it on manifesto. manifesto. Oh, okay. For Belgian so it's, house strain, it's not really okay. a wit beer yeast. Well, we could go back to that too. Um, it's the Belgian it, shelled. Yeah. It's like uh, the Antwerp. Strain. Yeah, the uh, Y yeast thirty six fifty five. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it, it actually it responds great to uh, temperature changes in it. Yeah. In it. It flocks. Yeah, I mean, it does what you want it to do. Okay, production wise, everything. Yeah. Did you filter this beer? Because yeah. it's clean. That, and, and oh, so yeah, it was biofined. Okay, uh, we use biofined for any of our beers that we want clear. Uh, and then we split the batch into two. So this is a thirty barrel batch. We split it into two fermenters, and the one that we were going to use for the uh, for the bottle conditioned version, that's the one that ended up getting dosed with uh, the bread. Okay. Bread seed. Bread seed. So it was one liter of Brett C for 15 barrels. Got it. And what temperature did you ferment the the zest, the, the base? The, it actually the, started at about uh, 64, 65, and we let it ramp up. And, uh, yeah, it, it, super clean. Yeah. How hot what did was you let the, it go? Uh, it's nice. Amanda, what was the original uh, the original gravity on, on the just zest in general? Was it like 20? It wasn't even that high. I mean, it was about 19. Okay. Yeah, oh, 18 oh, and 19. Played, it wasn't that high. It, was, oh <laughs> <laughs> it kind of reminds me of why I like society's Belgian pale so much. Yeah, those are so oh, yeah. super that clean. They're, it's, that they're so clean, but you, I get enough of the Belgian flavor, yeah. you know, a profile right. that I like. It's just that if it goes even a little farther, it's too much for me. Well, so that's the it's thing not that's, smacking you in the face. I think yeah. it goes to the idea of, like, American IPA. It's like, yeah, yeah Belgian beers have you know phenols and esters but if you look at the sort of more classic examples they're not that over the top it's I, like it's the american yeah, thing like oh, yeah. yeah well shit let's ferment it at 80 right. yeah and like let's yeah. make it yeah. really yeah. Bring it to yeah. Man, it's just too like, much yeah. Yeah. Thing, so yeah. manifesto yeah. we we ferment that at 68 and we actually use this also in unionist which is our belgian pale ale it's our february seasonal and we drop that down to 62 and it is fantastic it's like it's clean. super clean it's not overly phenolic it's a fantastic yeast strain it's amazing what a few degrees will do this yeah, is yeah. The, uh, antwerp stream right you're talking about yeah 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 
Uh, thirty six fifty five. Nerds, nerds. nerds. <laughs> I got, I thank you, say ogre. Too, like, um, <laughs> you know, the the, the we with manifesto specifically, like we played around my original homebrew uh, recipe for that beer, and the the versions that we converted to to the bigger size uh, initially at Eagle Rock was uh, we used two yeast strains, and it was uh, a saison yeast strain, which originally it was saison Dupont, and then it was uh, the Whitbeer strain. Um, but we had, you know, we had issues with that. Obviously, everybody has issues with the Saison yeah. Dupont. Because yeah. <laughs> you're not Saison Dupont. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But you know what? Well, they're I mean, inconsistent, well, too. We, we don't have all the other the yeast. The thing is, I talked, right, yeah, yeah, right. I talked to the, uh, the lab techs from, uh, from Y-East who were, you know, Owen at the time, he was still with, with Y-East. He was, like, incredibly helpful. And he was like, he's like, dude, honestly, like, we when we selected that strain to to sell commercially, like we cultured it from the, from the bottle, and uh, I hope I'm not giving too much information here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> listens one. anyway. The red yeah. phone is um, going off. Yeah. These are not the yeast cells you're looking for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was like, you know, the, the the strain that we selected was for flavor. But he's like, there was probably 15 oh. different morphologies in that yeah, bottle, wow. and it was to finish the beer, like. Those were for attenuation. Like the one that we yep. selected hmm. to sell was specifically for flavor. So even Saison Dupont, like according yeah. to you yeah. know what's in the bottle, is not just yeah. that strain. Like it's they not use like they're blend. just commenting with that single strain. So okay, um, no wonder you know they struggle with it too. Apparently, it's, sure, <laughs> it's, like they're all blend. Yeah. it's not just us. Yeah. The struggle is real. Struggle is real. The struggle is real. Yeah. So it does take more than one yeast sometimes to get the beer you're trying to make. Yeah. It's funny to me that your two favorite beers are your very low alcohol beer and a somewhat high alcohol beer, right? What's the ABV on this one? My two favorite beers from you, I should say. Uh, this was 8%. It's 8%, yeah. No, there you go. Mm-hmm. That's nice, too, that it's not a 10% Belgian Golden Strong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think Although, actually it ended up being about like 8 and a third, 8 and a f- 8.4, but, you okay. know. Now I don't like it. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Too much, Eric. You yeah. fucked it up. Yeah. Yeah. I used Sorry. to like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that was the Fire. idea. It was yeah. like we just wanted to make a beer that was, you know, again, balanced in the scheme of the Belgian Gold Strong. And we did the Belgian Gold Strong because it was our sixth anniversary. Yeah. You know, Duval and the whole 6-6, six, six, you know, six that whole six. idea. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, we just wanted to do something that was more our style, more balance, and not going over the top with the with the beer. You killed it, but also thank you. Thank also you. very subversive, as is our style. Okay, yeah, I, I can <laughs> see a little, this. A little bit of bread, and you know, yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> oh, I think you also, I don't it. like having headaches. Ah, yeah. Agreed. Right. Well, and the, so one the, thing I don't like is fucking headaches, headaches man. Yeah. <laughs> so the interesting thing about that is a, a Belgian Golden Strong, a, a Duval is Doc's favorite hangover beer. In fact, awesome. he brings Duval by the case to, oh. to oh, Burning yeah. Man. <laughs> right. Because for five fucking days, we have hangover. Like one long hangover. Yeah. And so, but it's funny you should mention that. Like, uh, if it's too, um, is it phenolic when it's the, the alcohol or is it, uh, it's not it's ester, fusel. is it? It's fusel. 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 Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, you get the headache and the yeah. whole thing. My so, favorite Italian dish uh, is feely. It's the feely, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so it is a great style for, for hangovers. I might have to bring us a case of this this year. We could, yeah, uh, sweet. We, we, we can, can arrange, arrange that. that. That would be, yeah. I think it would be a very nice, because we just sit in the RV from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. <laughs> drinking. You know, it, it's going it's to develop, <laughs> yeah. yeah. develop character while you're there if it's that uh, hot. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. The yeah. bread will act fast. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll split Nando, the case. Everybody take cover. That's right. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you guys picked up on that. I always, well, our, we have a lot of nicknames at the brewery. and, and uh, <laughs> Good, I like this. Uh-huh. So Eric's nickname is Nando. Okay. You know, um, like Nando Calrissian? Yes, that's what I'm saying. It must be Calrissian, right? Um, <laughs> Wait. Uh, my oh, middle name middle is name. Hernando, which is my grandfather's name. But we can't okay. be troubled to pronounce all those syllables. <laughs> right. No. It takes too much time. We're lazy. Yeah. So it's Nando. Well, I like Eric. Nando. Well, it's a different type silly. of lazy. It's uh, <laughs> silly JP. Yeah. Well, then, and Lee's obvious nickname is Leroy. I mean, 
It used yeah. to be so murder face, longer. though, when his hair was longer. <laughs> <laughs> any any like fans of the, the Metal, Metalocalypse series? Metalocalypse. <laughs> Please show them your ID, just just to get a, a view. Is there a camera for the viewers? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. There's a camera. Let me check it first, and then... Uh, oh Leroy Turner for murder, murder, murder face. face. Holy cow. Yeah. Same guy. <laughs> Viva, what camera are you on? Are you on the guest cam? Can we? Show us can I, I know I'm trying right, to. Yeah. Let's see. Block there, with, there hold your go. finger. Right. There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah. Damn, we got a good picture of murder face. Uh, based on Bebo's His addresses. Face. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, pull back just a little bit because it's out of focus. Uh, do you, do okay. you want a debit card? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hold it like Not that. that you should uh, give some uh, that? tax ID in for that's, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Is it so you better? see, you yeah. see the nickname. I love it. And why we we oh. couldn't continue to call him Murder Face after he cut his hair, or actually it was after his hair grew too long. We couldn't call, no longer call him Murder Face. It was just um, right there right. in that moment. <laughs> it was, it was a moment in time. It was a perfect, <laughs> moment. perfect right through time. Would he murder me? On tours, would he introduce himself as "Hi, I'm Murder Face"? <laughs> He'd be like, "Oh shit!" He would introduce himself, <laughs> and we would all say, "No, no, no! Oh, this, this is Murder Face." Yeah, he got a, he got a few oh, Ron, like Ron Swanson. He got a, I think oh, yeah. it was about four Ron Swansons on uh, Saturday at the yeah. Bruce Fest. Mm-hmm. Everybody yeah. who wasn't giving him shit for that hat. Yeah. <laughs> that that, that was, was ballsy Swanson. the day before opening yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, I'm a fan, man. Eric has an uh, L.A. Dodgers hat on, and uh, apparently this is uh, Padres territory. Where are we? I don't know where we are. <laughs> Damn you. Yeah. yeah. He's as dumb as Sim. <laughs> he is as dumb as Sim. Uh, all right. <laughs> so the restaurant's open. People can go there now. Is the tasting room still at the original brewery? Can yep. you go there and, and, and that's... Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the tasting room is still there um, in our uh, unfortunately small-sized brew brew house and uh, tasting room space, but it's still there. Um, you have a nice tasting room. I remember it being very nice. It's yeah. Nice size. It's yeah. nice size. Well, Good you know, size. it's really funny because when we, when we started out, we kind of figured, let's let's... All the tasting rooms we had been to at breweries were sort of just right next to the tanks, and it was sort of like an afterthought in a way. And we thought, let's do something that's more akin to the like the wine tasting rooms we've gone to, like in Santa Inez or you know those areas. Um, yeah, and so that's why we did the tasting room as we did. Um, but but now you know as as breweries are opening up and and everybody's kind of the, the culture is. Is advancing collectively Would exponentially. You say it's maturing. It's maturing. maturing. Even. Oh, maturing. Yeah. Yeah. Exponentially. <laughs> you know, our our, our little our little uh, humble tasting room is suddenly in a, You know, it's 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 like no longer uh, sufficient. It's sort of like you guys only have eight beers on tap. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll go. Wow. We'll yeah. get a few here. Yeah. What are you new? I know. Yeah. Yeah. So your tap no, list actually, isn't we're, we're so yeah. old. <laughs> yeah. and we only have eight beers on tap. <laughs> Don't worry. It'll come back around and we'll just wait it out. It's but like, also your your brewery, which you can see, of course, from the taste room, is is really nice, too. Like we've talked about your, your dairy equipment and all of that. But I've been to breweries, Craftsman, where you go in and <laughs> we, you talk about like a, like a hobbled together brewery, uh, which makes great beer, too. But it's kind of a mess, and there's like things. Ever you're pretty super like clean and nice, and it well, does you. not look like you bought a used system well, from somebody. Thank you, but I I will say because we're in we're <laughs> exposed to the public, so we kind of have to. You have to yeah. do right. <laughs> Believe me, if right. we didn't have to, be like, you know, guys, we got to tidy up here once in a while. We have those uh, conversations. You might not, yeah. We take great pride in keeping it clean. So you you should. So you're <laughs> regretting putting that window from the tasting room into the brewery? I mean, I regret it it's from fun. that We just park standpoint. shit in front of the window. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. the worst yeah. part about yeah. it. The yeah. price perspective of the window, but... Yeah. yeah. You end up having glass no, my, right I regret in front it. of it. Really, no. <laughs> Well, and did I hear canning earlier in the show? Are you guys canning We've something? We've been doing a little bit of mobile canning, which okay. has been pretty cool. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a great way to not have to invest in a yeah. canning line, canning line. which mm-hmm. would be great to have. But um, Someday. We have but, uh, uh, we have the guys coming in next week to do some more umlauts, uh, umlaut. and then we're going to be doing the uh, first release in our day trip series, to North. That's going to be two or three weeks from now. So Nice. 
Well, Did the, you ever uh, think about doing just the umlaut on the label instead of the word? <laughs> dot, <laughs> dot. That's it's it. Like, or, like Actually, it's like Prince. Like Prince decided right. he, you yeah. know. Uh, Shit. Because people can't tell their friends about Shit. the beer then unless they well, know yeah, it's. Uh, well, uh, why, damn it. Why thank why thank you for that? the idea. Yeah. Well, it's too late to the game but, here. But how still do you tell Thanks for showing up to the marketing meeting. It's like this beer from Eagle Rock. I don't know. It has two fucking dots on the thing. I couldn't find a name. I don't know. It's like that bar in Walnut Creek no one can pronounce. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like you're yeah. choking on. Oh, you mean you mean old? Sin old rich. Yeah. 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 rich. <laughs> well, and the the uh, the companion piece, I guess, to umlaut is doomlaut. Doomlaut. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Schwartz beer. Yeah. yeah. Well, so it's basically uh, faux. Fo- yeah. Faux Schwartz, Schwartz beer. beer. It's basically umlaut with a little bit more Munich in there and Cinemar to get the dark color. Oh, I see. Nice. But doomlaut. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's like the Halloween. Love it's the it. Halloween version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um. I, uh, also, I don't know if we have time to talk about the the day trip series. Do we have yeah, time we got time. Yeah, so it? this is a this is a brainchild of of Eric's. Uh, you mean Nando. Nando. Now we confuse <laughs> the general. Yeah. Yeah. I, Nando. Not, <laughs> yeah. Nando. They'll remember that better. So, so. Nando. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nando came up with this idea because he's a uh, probably. Nobody knows about this except for us at the brewery, but he's a, a very avid and a, an active hiker. He's summited Whitney, uh, what, a couple of times and done the High Sierra Trail. High Sierra Trail. And kind of a badass in the hiker realm of, of things. Um, okay. I wouldn't say super bad. <laughs> he, he's humble. Say like, like moderate to... He's humble. Yeah. He can put his... He, he's he like can put a his moderate badass. Right. He's a baller. He's a baller. He's, um, he's, a, he's a baller. He's a hiking baller. Good. I just like walking. Thanks, Tasty, for that. <laughs> I started walking. I just really enjoy walking, guys. Yeah. Left foot, right foot. <laughs> Left foot, right foot. I found I, I was, was running. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, was, I was good at it at an early age. And I just kept walking. Just go with it. <laughs> so he... Mando came up with this idea to do uh, because we're in LA and and you know located very closely to a lot of hiking. very cool <laughs> hiking, <laughs> a lot of walking. Oh my god! And, uh, it's the hike to the bus so, stop. <laughs> yeah. So he said, "Why don't we do this this uh, series of beers called the the day trip series and uh, you know kind of attribute it to to local stuff that's that's cool and and accessible nearby." So. We're going to do the, the first release of that. Uh, actually, so I said, hell no. And then they uh, argued me about it. And I was like, okay, well, let's do it. And it's <laughs> going to happen now. Nice. No, I'm just you know, <laughs> I thought it was a good idea. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're actually partnered with the National Forest Foundation for this <gasps> project. And we're going to donate a portion of the proceeds for all, from all the sales of that beer um, to, to their uh, San Gabriel National Monument Fund, which is the one closest to us okay um right off of the two north and um we're gonna can it as well as have it on draft but nice. uh yeah, yeah eric good can, for hiking yeah, oh, no, yeah. Eric can no, that was, you might be able to get <laughs> if you do want to be a super hiker take, take it back around <laughs> but those are tall boys too well you oh, might yeah, be able yeah, to all right yeah. it's gonna be in tall boys what, what, what i was it, thinking like you might be able to get a really good deal on base camp brewings um, oh, 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 no 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 Crazy drunken stunt very soon. So okay. just, just for, hold hold your breath. Okay. <laughs> but why, why not just put them in? Camel, I, have, I have no recollection of this, sir. <laughs> so that way it goes right into your yeah, camelback. That'd be perfect. Yeah. But um, actually, though, I mean, I, like I thought it was kind of cool. Right, Nando yeah. was saying why this was a cool beer to brew. I'll let him talk about it. So I don't. Yeah. So tell tell us about the beer itself. We always uh, so my my hiking buddies and I will will come back from these long hikes and we're like. You know what would what would be great right now, and you know we talk about beer styles, and I thought it'd be awesome to do, say a uh, uh, just a beer that's perfect for our area, and a brown ale like water chemistry wise, the water that we get that's perfect. There's no water chemistry adjustments that need to be done. Uh, and which is just give me a quick uh, lowdown for our listeners. What is the alkaline. what's the yeah. makeup? It's a little bit more alkaline. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hold on. So, the, our water is horrible. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so you it's don't treat it ele- at all. Yeah, it's elevated in 
every single ass. The water that we steal, by the way. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so thank you for the drought. <laughs> yeah. Every other uh, state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, stuff. there's been a remarkable difference. Like, there's less precipitate in our uh, huh? our hot yeah. liquor tank right now because of how amazing the rain has been this past season. Oh, and that's amazing. interesting. Yeah, yeah. cuz we we had suffered from like terrible scale You could tell we were like yeah. scraping the bottom of the really? well yeah. or whatever. And that's changed yeah. just because we're getting more groundwater. Yeah, yeah. Your, your TDS has dropped. Yeah, they, yeah. they definitely oh, yeah. dropped. Um so every this single time, the time you go I'll I- point out how uh Eric is the more scientific of our uh, <laughs> three, uh, and Lee is the more artistic. I understand, yeah. Uh, we'll go back to uh, yeah. currently in progress. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So next next time, anyway, Nova. The water, the water, the water of Southern well. California. Yeah, yeah. So you're walking through the forest, and you, you, know, you pick off uh, pine needles, you know, and they smell like citrus, and they smell like grapefruit and pine. And I wanted to try to capture that in the beer and try to use the water that we get and not have to treat it and just that's it. That's, that's what we're real. using. So it's and a actually, Czech, it's a Czech style pilsner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, one of the that's big brown. the big uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the big influences for that was uh, uh, Brian from Moonlight. Uh, I remember many, many, many years ago listening to the session and like you know he's talking about. You know, use the ingredients that are there. Yeah. Like, you know, just just do it. Like, just make it work. And that's what you would be awesome to drink. And I said, you know, one day I'm going to try to do that and try to work that into the to the process. And, yeah, this was like the beer that actually worked. You know, it's like our water is perfect for brown ales to porters. Okay. And it worked perfectly. So, so you make a bunch of pale ales. Makes sense. So <laughs> did you so put, like, was, it, was it a porter or was it a star? It's, it's a brown ale. It's American, it's American, American brown, brown ale. ale. Oh, okay, yeah, so American brown ale. It's, Which uh, is for hops? Uh, Chinook and Centennial. Okay. Casey's oh, okay. wheelhouse. Right. Yeah. Right in there. What was the EBV? Uh, it's uh, 5%. Thank you. <laughs> like we do. Didn't we, we do have that with some of Tasty's cookies, too? Was that oh, uh, uh, there's no Tasty's right. cookies. Also uh, great for a post I know treat. Uh, right, yes. Yeah. If, it's if it's a different kind of day trip. But. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a different day trip. We're yeah. looking for right. that extra layer of dankness. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I the, should make some shroom cookies. Oh, no. Oh, snap. Whoa. Tasty, don't Rain start. You've already oh, for ruined. A hike, the outdoors, hiking? Oh, my God. Oh, for outdoors, <laughs> okay. Yeah. You heard it first Just don't here start on, handing uh, the them out in GRB. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't do that. You know. <laughs> No, that okay. Yeah, it's any Concord Police Department. We're joking. Right. No, we don't do that. Joke. Uh, I have no recollection of what you're saying. Sir. We can do anything. The Concord Police Department loves us. They don't care. So why don't you make the beer dark? What did you use to make it uh, in American brown? Uh, uh, there is pale chocolate and a little yeah. touch of uh, carafa. That was it. For the so mostly yeah. it's a pale chocolate flavor. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pale chocolate flavor. Liked it. That sounds delicious. Yeah, I used a little yeah. bit of uh, the Simpsons DRC, which we're a huge fan of. The double yeah. roasted crystal. What, what, what lullaby is that? Is that uh, it's star? about 110. Yeah. But well, use a little bit to offset. Uh, yeah. I see. Good. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. And so this beer is available now, or it's it's coming down the pipeline? It's actually getting to get brewed this coming weekend, and then it'll be uh, available two weeks after that. Cool. In cans, In too? Because it's a hiking beer, right? Yeah. So. And Leroy did a fantastic job, like, this is like a truly a product that we're, I mean, very proud of. Can't wait to see it. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, that's exciting stuff. That's a cool thing to do, and and, and it sounds like a good cause too. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good to give a little back to the thing you like to do. Yeah. All right. Yeah, cool. Definitely. What's the website? EagleRockBrewing.com? dot uh, com. Brewery dot com. EagleRockBrewery dot com. You can check it out. You can keep abreast of of new uh, products like this coming out. You can go check out the things that we already talked about. Is there like a where to find Eagle Rock on the website? Uh, yeah, uh, there yeah. is. Cool. Um, and uh, also. Up, up north in this area, we're uh, distributed uh, by Hen House Brewing Company. So, Oh, nice. Yeah. We like them, too. Yeah, So, good. shit, that's, we get their beer quite a bit. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. easy to get your beer now. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Well, it's been on a few times, too. Yeah. Uh, but Kevin enough, and he brought on Solidarity. He did? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For me. Did, I, did you tell right. me? So, Solidarity, which... Uh, uh, pull that I, Band-Aid uh, off and dig yeah, in that wound right. a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, thanks for jabbing us. Well, yeah. I think it's just which, regional now. Huh? Which, right, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Is that everybody I know who's had it loves it, 
but now it's a seasonal. It was the, the, the general populace. I is think not we a have cheap. Uh, we have uh, cheap friends. Uh, well, <laughs> join the club. So the, uh, the problem. <laughs> the the problem that you know, going back to this thing we were talking about at the beginning of the break was, uh, you know, this, you know, the underground and alternative thing is is uh, you know a lot of us like. Yeah. Lower alcohol and, and sessionable beers with a lot of flavor. But uh, apparently a lot of us don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lee just did um, the old empty well, glass switcheroo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of us uh, don't uh, murder face. <laughs> agree Sex with those again. opinions uh, as according to with our wallets. So. so you weren't selling yeah. as much as no. we would think yeah, because we like it so much. No, he ran up into the session beer for the same price as strong beer. Right, uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, and also, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're yeah. selling that, that beer for, for less, let's say, per half barrel for, you know, I don't know, 50 bucks less per half barrel or something like, like that. The retailer. As, as opposed to the, the, the IPA. Yeah, they, same, yeah, same but price. yeah, the, for the, the retailer, you know, that. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's also it's not the easy sell. It was it was a very hard sell on the retail side. I mean, even in the tap room, you know, people would come in. Uh, you know, I came in with my friend. They like beer. I'm not. I, I kind of like wine. Uh, you know, uh, why don't you try this? Just mm. give it. A, mm-hmm. I'm going to charge you. Just see what you think. And then they say, "Oh, that doesn't even taste like beer. I, right. I like that." Oh, and you know. You guys have all experienced the same sure. thing, and, and then yeah. suddenly they're a beer fan, um, and that you know that was solidarity that that helped make that connection. But uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things. It's like when you have a limited amount of tank space and you have a certain amount of beers you need to produce, and yeah, mm-hmm. the rising demand. So I mean, let, uh, let me. Uh, well, yeah. I'll tell you this: let if, me, if we made no change to the beer, but called it like a. Black, okay. Black, black session. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Lee, the, you're, you're, you're on the same page. But this mm-hmm. is what I was about to do for you, is, is to say is it's it's marketing. Yeah. It's marketing. Yeah. There is a very popular brand of beer um, that was a very difficult beer to sell under a different name. It was called like a golden honey something or other. And uh, I don't – I and, and this – some of this is conjecture, but I, I don't think anything was changed about the beer, <laughs> right. except a brilliant fucking marketing campaign and the coolest logo ever and a great name. And now the brewery is like it had had to build another brewery just to make enough of the beer. Um, right, right. Um, you know, very to, big to, brewery to, to right? keep up with demand. A, a fairly si- a good size regional brewery. Yeah. Um, and, and it just sort of goes to show how much. Uh, in fact, it worked on me. I never would have bought these golden <laughs> blonde ale. <laughs> <laughs> but right, the right. Uh, but the yeah. cool ass uh, black everything was just so awesome. I was a big fan for a while. Um, it, it's amazing how much a little twist on the yeah. on, on an already mm-hmm. good beer because it's an it's a great beer. I mean, shit, um, it's called Doomlout. Something <laughs> like solidarity <laughs> all year round. It's Doomlout. Well, and, and, and then the The hard part is like, what's that little magic thing mm-hmm. that that. Uh, the consumers respond to, and, and that's why either you hire a very expensive uh, marketing firm or you just sort of stumble upon it like some of us do um, or some breweries do. I'm just saying you, you could not have to make that seasonal if there was just whatever that thing was. And I don't know if it's calling it a black uh, you well, know, yeah. session IPA or what, but it's such a good beer that it's – I know that it's just marketing that just doesn't make it fly you know, off the shelves. I think I, – I agree with you, and I, I think it, it is just one of those things where it's like uh, – and, and I, I don't think we're going to keep it on a seasonal status forever. Okay, you know, I, yeah. I think at some point we will – but, you know, hopefully. Well, and I do think it's yeah. shifting a little more. People are liking <laughs> sessionable beers a little more. Slow clap. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, we're just going to actually start making it more full time for JP. And he's going <laughs> to. Yeah. So I'll be sending 15 barrels up here in the next. Just, yeah, this yeah. will be yeah. your number one right. solidarity account. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Warren and I will drink it. It'll be fine. Yeah. 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 I'll do that for you guys. I mean, in the meantime, <laughs> you could just give them the Pico Brew recipe and let them brew oh. it at home. I mean, that's. Almost oh, as yeah. easy. Well, they were on uh, Can You Brew It? Yeah. yeah. With, okay. the, with the oh, uh, recipe right. a yeah. couple of years back. And I right. brewed it a, a few times, actually. It's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Nice. Actually, I got I to gotta say about that, too, uh, is that it's funny because, you know, the, the homebrew recipe, and I, I've gotten shit from a lot of commercial brewers uh, 
since the, the, the Can You Brew It came out. And they're like, they're like dude. Only 42 malts? Like, <laughs> really? I think yeah, like, you're going to stop there? I think yeah. we need a couple more. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, you know, just kind of laughing it off. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And also, one of the things I forgot to mention when we when we when we inherited the uh, the Alesmith equipment was the scale, the malt scale oh, God. was a manual malt scale. So you oh, had wow. to slide to look like the doctor's office. Oh, 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 dude, oh, I remember. Oh man, these I completely guys, so these guys yeah, making this up. I completely oh, forgot no, about I'm this. Not no, no, that's joking. totally true. Oh, and that, it was Terry with a whole bag of nuts. Yeah, like <laughs> nuts and washers. I, 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 had a bag of nuts. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I I would kind of do it. With oh, God, God, I forgot like about sorting through all the different malts, like the ten or so different malts. And then after a while, the guys are like, "Can we just combine?" So like, can we come on, dude? Scale? Crystal forty and crystal can, eighty. Can, can we just do fucking crystal sixty? More? Come on, <laughs> yes, God. Uh, <laughs> fuck you, man. And I, was like, I mean, that was the subtext. They didn't say it, right? But, right, but, yeah. but you knew yeah. what was. Oh, and yeah. I was like, thought. Okay, yeah, go ahead. And <laughs> and it was funny because actually, after listening to <laughs> Can You Brew It and then Tasty with his like listening him to. You know, as he's commenting on uh, Eric's uh, thoughts about the two north, and you know, Tasty is the, the consummate home brewer. I mean, he's he's kind of yeah what we all strive to be. Really, <laughs> yes, right? in I mean, life and in home brewing. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so, so you know, <laughs> when I heard <laughs> honestly, when I heard Tasty's comments about like we used to do a little bit of sugar, and and the the reason we you know first added sugar to it was because it was just kind of a traditional thing like. Like British British milds, they used to be taxed on on their mash ton. So it was um, like, you know, you would you'd add some sugar, raise the gravity, and and so you know it's kind of like, eh, you're not going to get some so much character out of this, but you're going to get a little bit of, you know, gravity. Happy, happy customers, sure. Yeah. And 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 so you know, it just kind of, you know, uh, Drew Beecham from the Falcons first introduced me to milds, and and he used to do sugar in his milds, and I you know I kind of like. I, that's cool. I'm going to, I'm going to do some of that. And, and, and the idea of using sugars with, with unfermentable complex stuff like Demerara and, and molasses type stuff that, that isn't, that's going to add some flavor, not just fermentables was cool to me. Um, but I remember hearing on one, <laughs> I, it was either like the sessions or it was, it was the session or it was uh, can you brew it? And tasty was like, yeah, yeah, yeah that brown sugar, it's like a half. One percent. It doesn't really do anything. And I was like, <laughs> and I was just like, like true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Tasty's probably right about that. <laughs> but you had one percent of like a dozen things, right? Well, yeah. And then, you know, I just sort of like, all right, maybe I'm being a little too precious about this. And well, somebody must right. overrode somebody. I let it, you know, <laughs> Baker's Baker's dozen of. But yeah, it was, it was definitely it was it was Tasty's. Guidance what? that sort of uh, all he's excellence. saying is it might be possible to produce a very similar beer with <laughs> with like, fewer, <laughs> fewer oh. ingredients. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you know that was in one of those theory, in times, theory, moments yeah. in time. Allegedly. It was like, ah, let's we're gonna. How much? Yeah, I don't want to know the quantity. Yeah. I want to know the cost. Uh, eliminating <laughs> the brown sugar, two hundred bucks a batch, fifty bucks a batch. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> On a commercial yeah. scale, yeah, it was like that's what like I mean. Yeah, fifty bucks a fifty batch. bucks a I mean, batch. Like, it was stupid, and the, yeah, I mean, but no, but that's a lot. Tasty was years. right. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. the thing is, like, I think one of the important takeaways is is that you can get <laughs> <laughs> homebrew your home. <laughs> but no, I mean, brewery. like you know, using Tasty's uh, ultimate wisdom yeah. as, as a guide is that yeah. you know you you can you really can kind of get too far up your own ass as a home brewer and you sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Wait, come on. What? I, I did That's it. That's a book title right it. there. Yeah. 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 You get too far. Oh, right. 101. Yeah. The too Jeremy Rose. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's right good. in between how to brew and brewing classic stuff. Yeah. 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 Right it's in there. I mean, called I the really, rabbit hole. I fell into that. And, and, and um, yeah. you know, I mean, that's that's kind of part of it is you you just sort of realize it as is. Or hopefully you realize that. Right. Good, good God, you don't want to be stuck up your own ass the rest of your life. No, but, but it does happen. But yeah, yeah. it does happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very butyric up there. So yeah. anyway, you know, thanks, Very uh, Tasty. Thanks for 
you know, uh, getting me out of my head. Getting me out of my head. Let me pull your head out He's like a big shoehorn. You got him out of his own ass. I'm hearing you, brother. No problem. Much obliged. Tasty does have a very, I feel like, common sense approach to brewing. Yeah, they do. But you don't ignore facts. No, no, no. And you don't ignore what's new or anything else. But you do tend to just sort of like, all right. Take it in the stride. Let's. It's kind of simple here. Let's make it common sense. Yeah, that yeah. is usually good advice. Well, yeah, that's cool. That's, I like that story. <laughs> yeah. That is one of my favorite tasty stories yeah. that's come in here. I like this one. So, you know, we, needless to say, we don't use sugar in manifesto anymore. It was never, it was never necessary to begin with. Right. I mean, solidarity. Sorry, solidarity. Yeah. Solidarity, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I think it's time to wrap things up, boys. Um, we got dinner coming. We're going to go uh, drink some beer out in the bar. Uh, I do have to remind you all, uh, both in the studio and listening at home, that you can buy dildos and stuff from adamandeve.com. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's right. You can go to adamandeve.com right now and use coupon code BNARMY. That's B-N-A-R-M-Y. And you get uh, a bunch of free gifts. Tell them about the free um, gift. Let me find the free gift. Is there, is there is there still S. the free gift? I think Lee wants to do the reading. Right, yeah. Can we get Lee to do the reading? Yeah. You know, Lee and I have uh, babies, and this is more important to us these days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's retired from being sultry. The toys? <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do. Porn Adam stash. and Eve thing, the murder Porn, wave. Porn Porn stash. Stash. Re- I'm going to do the live read. read. You're going to help me out. Uh, all right. This whole live read right. uh, sucks my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Murder face, let me ask you a question. Are you getting enough? You'd like more, right? Moderate, yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Remind you, Cash is listening. A moderate amount. Well, adamandeve.com wants to give you more. I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, With 10 free gifts. 10? 10. That's right. It's 10 now? Yeah, it's 10. 10 free gifts. Well, they got Zero. And here's what you get. First, you're going to get a sexy surprise for her. I don't know that there's a her, but if there is, it's for her. Well, this kid didn't happen on his own. Right. right. He's, he's a kid. Yeah. He just well, fell out of the mud. At least one time in history it did. So, uh, Second, well, a specially of. selected toy for you. Uh, him. Does that mean... I don't know. Uh, I re- he's I, making a He's pointing towards towards to the yeah. underside his, of his chair. Yeah. I believe yeah. it's pronounced um, anus. Uh, his <laughs> anus. Uh, I'm not sure. It could be any number. No, that's probably can only be a couple things. Let's it's be specially honest, but, selected uh, for you. Yeah, um, you either have an innie or an Audi. Uh, probably like a tingly balm for your. <laughs> it could be, what? See, it could be tingly balm. Tingly balm. Yeah. Uh, it uh, people, ask you to get any more ideas. It, it burns so good. good. If it's like tiger. Bomb. If it's Tasty. like Tiger Bomb, no, thank you. Icy hot. Be careful, so, You have, to, you have to stand up in a couple minutes. So just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'll put off, my headphones on my lap. <laughs> so so far, we it could be a noose directed. It could be Tingly Bomb. Tingly Bomb. Tingly Bomb. Uh, tingly I don't know bomb. what else it could be. That needs to be a beer name. Uh, tingly, tingly Bomb. Tingly bomb. That's not bad. Uh, we Trademark. Can, we, can can That's, we can make that happen. Szechuan peppercorn. Right. It's so. <laughs> That's the second beer in the Danger series, brewery. right? Yeah, it actually is. Yeah. 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 You've seen all I those know. massage parlors on Eagle Rock Boulevard? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If the BN owned a brewery, yeah. we would go out of business on the sole principle that we uh, value humor over uh, revenue, anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and so we would, so we're like, Tingly Bomb, brilliant, name it. <laughs> Done. Yeah. No one's buying Tingly well, Bomb. Well, we got slow clap, so we'll see. <laughs> there would yeah. be lawsuits. Yeah. It would be lawsuits. Lawyer fees. Yeah. Lawyers. But we're like, his name is solidarity. Just... No, it still doesn't. <laughs> 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 yeah, we can name it your solidarity, and the Eagle Rock guys are like, "Fuck it, take it." That <laughs> <laughs> didn't work for us. I had good luck. <laughs> uh, all right, and then third, something you'll both enjoy. You know, I don't know if that's like Tell a double-sided more. or... Uh, <laughs> oh, a half but, and half, yeah. yeah. Dildo, but oh, yeah, combo. Oh, this, <laughs> oh, at home, we call that a half and half. <laughs> I think that's... <laughs> I think we call 
at a pizza at home. Where, where I come from. Yeah, yeah. Who, pizza. Who yeah. doesn't like pizza? Yeah. yeah. I have a buy one, get one free coupon yeah. right now. It's on my fridge. I've seen, I've seen the ending of Requiem for a Dream. I, I don't need to experience it. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so something you great. Uh, plus, you'll get six full length adult mov- uh, DVD, movies on DVD. <laughs> Feature yeah. film. Can we like, all get this for wait, being on the show? This sounds great. Um, uh, <laughs> it's your grab bag. It's a gift package. <laughs> it's a grab bag. <laughs> so it is funny you mentioned that when I when I when this account first signed us up to be a sponsor, the account exec was like, "And so, by the way, if you ever like need anything, if you ever want anything, just let me know." Gift and I was like, "I'm not fucking telling you what weird shit I'm." Doing. <laughs> <laughs> I was we are like 27, 28. You're like, "What? Like, yeah. I don't need that." No, I well, would Justin, use the we can... website like everybody else. I'm not calling my Adam and Eve account exec oh, right. and being like, "All right, listen." But well, after, Justin, you know, we can like, hear it here. Can I just have, you're like, "All right, dude, I need some, uh, balm? some lube. I need." Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't have much time, so you gotta listen. To me. Yeah, eight, so. eight of the ten <laughs> items like, are yeah. tingly yeah. balm. Those Benoit balls are those in different yeah, diameters. Yeah. Tingly balm. I need one of those weird like double things. I don't know what the hell you call it. Anything leather with spikes. Anything that hurts real bad. Yeah, just anything. Yeah, yeah, like herpes. Right. Like anything with a zero <laughs> yes. gauge, send it my way. Yes. <laughs> Susan, she said this to me with a straight face in her email. Uh, and I was like, I've never... Uh, you mean I, there are no emoticons uh, or emojis? I will emojis never or? order my sex products from you. I will go to the website and do it. Yes. Right. But no, I'm not... Because they were going to be free. But right. I was, I was Under JP's name. Spend the money. <laughs> you're, you're paying for anonymity. Hey, Nancy, this <laughs> is JP over at the... <laughs> I'm uh, going to need... 12 12 double sided. <laughs> and then five minutes later, send her a follow up email. Go, my co host is a weird. Just want to make sure this is cool. Just say, are you good? He's a weirdo. Uh, I need hi. a pair of those underwear that tuck everything <laughs> in the oh, back. What? Yes. Have you guys ever thought I'm, of a I'm beer and underwear pairing, by the way? Beverly brings up it's a good point. Good I, idea. Uh-oh. Yeah, Uh-oh. we're. it's actually every Wednesday here at the Hop Grenade. Oh, cool. We, okay. are, <laughs> we do beer and underwear pairing. <laughs> uh, underwear Wednesday? Yeah. It's, tender, I take that day off. It's weird. It's yeah. real weird here. It's, sometimes it's fun. You know. Sometimes, not every time. <laughs> but some, uh, it's and the hit or miss. <laughs> the tenth thing you get is free shipping on your entire order. All you have to do uh, to get your ten free gifts. It's not hard, uh, but it could be. <laughs> Wait, isn't that the point? You just have to use coupon code B N Army. That's B N A R M Y over at AdamandEve dot com. Check it out. Okay. Sold. Okay. They're great. That's the best live read in a while, Murderface. Good job. (laughs) I feel like you were inspirational. uh, Do what I can. Yeah. (laughs) Which isn't much, but... Okay. <laughs> EagleRockBrewery.com is where you can go find out more information about the brewery. Thank you guys so much for coming up oh, and you. doing thank the festival. Thank you for having us. And yeah, doing the show thank and bringing guys. the beer. It was just really cool to talk to you guys and, and learn about the beer and the brewery. So um, I wish you luck. I want to come down and check out the restaurant next. Sounds yeah. like your brother definitely, is one definitely. hell of a chef. Well, thank you guys. I mean, you guys have definitely been an inspiration for us. All collectively as, as home brewers. Believe it or so. not. Awesome. So thank you guys, too. No, you're well, you're very welcome. It. Thanks for saying that. It's It's been except mostly for fun. Yeah. Uh, just, <laughs> except, mostly. For, except for JP. I inspire uh, in suicide and <laughs> giving up on life. I mean, I can see, now that I know that you guys like the show and stuff, I can see, you know, JP goes down all the time, and I, I bet every time you you're know, like, he does. oh, he, it's, he, he literally it's does the brewery, it's yeah. JP again. It's, um, right. it's not tasty this time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be done. I'll be done. Right, yeah. I got a text message. Someone wants to come Jake, see the. Oh, like, it's, it's JP again. <laughs> and Lee lives like around the corner, so he's like, fine. <laughs> yeah. I'll be there. Uh, he's like, are you with Tina? And I won't even have to. <laughs> <laughs> of course he's not. Uh, weren't, you, weren't you just here last weekend? <laughs> yeah. So, How often do you. So do? close to the Disneyland, right? <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah, to stop on right the way back the home. Yeah, it's right off the five. Yeah. It's yeah. right Perfect. There. All right. Well, I wish you guys continued success and good luck. Keep making this great beer, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to keep doing just just fine. It's nice to see you. Nice to have you up here. Um, you. It's been a real hoot, by the way. It has Cheers. been fun. Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, my, mouth, my face is like sore from laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't laugh that much, really. I, I, think, you're, I think your mouth muscles are atrophying. You should. <laughs> right. no. I haven't been on in a while. This it's has been the... my first show in a long time. That's true. Oh, you're, you're, right. Right. you're fresh back from New Zealand. Yeah. Oh, man. Those New Zealand guys know how to party. Oh. Yeah. 
and they know how to treat their guests right. Oh yeah. my god. That's nice. Oh. I was driven everywhere. It's just great. Really? I'm driven. I'm driven. I'm driven. <laughs> got my own my own room. It's like an apartment. And uh, wow, oh, geez. And wow. Uh, yeah, it was great. A lot you, of good where, events. Where do you got, sign up for this? Uh, I don't know. You just got to be like uh, tasty. Just got to be tasty. Like, <laughs> heard on the podcast. And then, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that that's was with cool. uh, weird. Uh, Palmer and I were both there. Uh, and uh, James Spencer was there from uh, Basic Brewing Radio. Yeah, and Chris Colby from. Uh, was it wine, wine and oh, beer? Yeah. Hey, so wine and beer, that's right. So so we all, right. We all spoke right. at their uh, conference. Nice. And then uh, preceding the conference, they had a uh, like a bus a, a tour kind of thing where we went to a uh, hop farm where they were actively harvesting uh, Nelson Savant. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Which we all like. You know, did you, them, with, little, little did you convince them? Did you convince them? Even though we can't name a hop after you? Commandeer some? They give you a plastic bag. Like, well, what? Yes. <laughs> I can't but you, you can't because customs, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can. You're just anyway. gonna get bothered a little bit. Then, then we you went. To to, then we went to a uh, processing plant, which is like a co-op thing, where like this, these guys all, you know, they dry their hops on the farm, and they send them in bales to this processing plant, and then they pelletize them. Okay. And then we also went to a um, the uh, New Zealand uh, version of the USDA, where they develop the hops. Oh, cool. Like the species. Yeah, to the, yeah, yeah, we, awesome. we had like the scientists there in the hot field and we're talking. Wow. It That's was pretty great. Because cool. awesome. we all knew enough like, about it. So yeah. where do we're I like, up like, be ready to, to get it? It was just great. So this was all in conjunction with the New Zealand. Yeah, it was their version of like it might do a, like a pub oh, tour cool. before yeah. a conference. Yeah. This was like a you know, like a That's tour awesome. of the area. That's a great idea. Which was where it's held is it is the like the Yakima Valley of uh, of New Zealand. Okay. In the southern island. More importantly, how were the you know, how were the ladies in New Zealand? They're pretty friendly. Yeah. yeah. yeah they, 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 yeah, I could, Tasty has some, uh, got to do his Tasty thing. Oh! Just, oh! In, the third, in the third person. Tasty Tales. <laughs> okay. Well, right. I'm not saying what that is. No. Is no. No, no, but we and, know. And all uh, gentlemen know. I was going to say, nobody knows. Well, nobody knows. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Side boob. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the grab here, grab there. No, it's great. Oh. The, uh, <laughs> Wait, the cones the, or the, uh, the, the cones? Beers, the beers there. The Lusty McDonald. Yeah, the beers. Oh, yeah? Somebody just called him the Lusty McDonald. Yeah. 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 The Lusty McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> this juicy, molesty <laughs> McDonald. You guys are the nickname wow. king. Wow. <laughs> hey, uh, my lawyer's going to be crying. <laughs> Yeah, okay. take it easy over there, brown sugar. <laughs> oh, well, you know. <laughs> no, I, I will say Gordy uh, from Lost Abbey uh, did uh, nickname uh, Leroy uh, Rapey Eyes. <laughs> 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 he just fell in love with his eyes. <laughs> yeah. Rapey Eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, fell in love with them. <laughs> God, Leroy. I could see Hansy. I could so... do Hansy. I, I could take that one. I, I, I would own it. Would you rather be I, called Rapey Eyes? So he'll take hands. Hey, I'm the master hey. of the low low hug. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I master the low master. hug. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. I'm dying. I have I'm nothing. Done. We yeah. can't top that. I have nothing to say. No, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, Hansy McDowell, master of the low hug. <laughs> it's a novel. So it's a DVD, I don't, DVD on Adam and Eve. That's his autobiography. So that's one of the things you can get. I don't like talking about you oh, guys. tombstones but are that needs that. to say that on your tombstone. Yeah. 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 This is Paralyzed Tasty McDowell. Master, master of the low hug. Then I'll show like, oh yeah. Oh man! Oh, oh, come again. Sh- 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 <laughs> two, hand, yeah. two hands around. Him. Demonstrate on Eric. Happy seriously, little. demonstrate on Eric right now. What's your logo? Yeah. Give, us, give us the master class. Because I can't bring in staff. You know. Oh, really? was, uh... really, really, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you had a great time. <laughs> Justin, I think you can't uh, just blow. It. We've had a breakthrough on the air here. I think I you're think right. Is, uh, I really? feel like you're right. I think we've had several breakthroughs today. This is amazing. I think yeah. I missed too many shows. I'm like, way too big a roll here. Yeah. First of all, I'm enjoying my job again, so that's a breakthrough. Right. Hey, uh, whoa. hey yeah. that's this awesome. Nice thing. That is a major thing, uh, by the way. Yeah, this is a big deal. Uh, we're we're breaking through tasty stereotypes right. left and right. He's really? been yeah. upside down for too long. Uh, yeah. Low hand skull. <laughs> by the way, the Eagle Rock Low lawyers will never let this episode air. Oh, no, no right. Just, you know. yeah. That's right. It'll Damn it. Like, it never <sighs> existed. We got to get some lawyers and then make sure they... <laughs> 
right. Anyway, uh, lots of BN fans in uh, cool. New Zealand, and uh, yeah, they so all they showed were up. And they love, yeah, they came. And some yeah. non fans now. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, some yeah. haters, right? <laughs> no, Palmer and I represented really well. well. Did Palmer any did of the uh, Australians that you met at the Australian conference fly uh, a couple, over and yeah, do that? Oh, that's cool. They did. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Very nice. And Whitey went along from... Whitey, uh, was, Whitey was there, yes, yeah. yes. He was all, we were all, he drove us all around, we were out late at night. Yeah, no, that's time. very cool. Yeah. Uh, how long were you there for? I was on uh, the ground about nine days. Okay. so The d- conference was like, they had me in control of me for like three and a half or four of those days. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you're going to go that far, you got to... Yeah, I had to go yeah, see the, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Make a trip out of it. Do some day thing stuff by myself. I've heard really good things about New Zealand, so it great. sounds like a, f- a fun People time. are great there. Cool, man. Well, I'm glad you had fun. I had a great time. Thanks for repping the piano. I there definitely did a really other, good job. In the other hemisphere. Yes. All right. Okay. I think we're going to get out of here. Next week, we've got uh, Colin Kaminsky back on the air. All right. right. Whoa. Yeah. He's yeah. he's been doing a lot with uh, enzymes and stuff as, with relates to uh, you know dry hopping and whatever. So uh, Ooh, we're going to talk about that. Cool. I'll get you a whole rundown. All right. That's yeah. pretty cool. So of Colin Kaminsky. make Claudia beer. Our favorite. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or fix that problem. Yeah. Put a bunch of flour oh. in post-fermentation. Yeah. Once you're you know good. how to do it, then you can fix the problem. Yeah. Right. Stop doing that. Or are we, don't do are we taking a break and we're coming back? No. We're... We've got a Twitter game, too. Okay, let's do the Twitter game. Uh, so our favorite uh, mad scientist next week on the program. Um, thanks to all our sponsors. And what was our Twitter game again? Um, uh, we have, we're have we opening a fondue restaurant to uh, stave off uh, bankruptcy, apparently, at some point. Yeah. And I want uh, name, name uh, options for the dishes. Okay. Because that's really what seals the deal. What did we? Yeah, sure. It's the name. It's the right, name. It's the right. marketing. Marketing. Right. Exactly. As Solidarity. We've, as we've established. Is there one called Fond You? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. Uh, if Lee just won. Yeah, Rapey <laughs> Eyes. So we don't Rapey have has- Fond You. Yeah. Twitter yeah. at yeah, Rapey Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is, that is that your Twitter phones. handle, right? Yeah. I, I, I love his wife. She's great. But I wish I wish Lee was single so he could yeah. be on Tinder as Rapey Eyes. Oh, yeah. Just to see what would happen. Uh, right. You know what? It would probably work. Yeah. Uh, it probably would. Know, people are weird. <laughs> hey, what are you into? Look into my eyes. Yeah. Into, You'll see. People yeah. are into weird <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Scotty B. Brewing says uh, he wants us uh, to call a dish "fuck you fondue," and he says, "I never win this shit, anyways." Okay, so he's, he's a little angry. rage, a little rage wow. tweet. Yeah. Jacob Mitchell yeah. says, uh, "Ball sack dipped in beer cheese and pretzels in warm carpet porter." That's one name. Whoa. Well, it's like a pairing, right? Oh, you know, it's the dish. Bag. Yeah, okay. ball sack with some cheese and, you know, a whole thing, right? Okay, all right. Uh, effing beer says butternutters. Something called oh, butternutters. Butter not bad. Not I bad. like that. Solid. Or nut bad. Uh, Chris B says Tasty's menu. Uh, cheese, course. It's a cheese course. Uh, double D's with white cheddar and leftover Rauk beer. The main course would be something called a meaty tea bag sampler with bouillon. <laughs> <laughs> Some thought went into that. Uh, yeah. 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 Only some, some thought. What's for dessert? <laughs> some disgusting thought went into that. Yeah, but some of the longest thought I right. think I've ever heard uh, in a yeah. Twitter game. Double so. D's with white cheddar. The so. entree yeah. was a sampler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, Jeremy Sanders says uh, CPR. He says, I imagine this is how tasty will go. Face down in a bowl of cheese. <laughs> A lot of cheese uh, things going on. Yeah. I mean, if it's not him, it'll be me. I'm not going yet. Yeah. So, so uh, a, a dish called CPR would be apropos. I, I like that. Well, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> down under. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I can tell you some stories. <laughs> We found Bevo's line. We didn't have a new show called. Well, now we know her limit. Called the Midnight Session. <laughs> the Midnight was just Tasty telling stories. Yeah. Oh, well, God. Tasty and Jamil have wanted to do a sex show for a long time. Yeah. Love yeah. strong. I love strong. I'm not producing that show. Yeah. I will I will, that show. I will run that show. Creep out. Totally will run that. Tasty after dark. We're going to disguise our voices. So you have to take seven showers after running that show. Yeah. You're going to have Rapey Eyes. Rapey Eyes is the guest. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. 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 He's there. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Reoccurring guest. He's on the street editor. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's only ten minutes long. <laughs> your your wow. Rapey Eyes. Um, have a confession. <laughs> 
he has a segment every week. A, uh, the, and now here's Rapey Eyes for his latest convention. He's the Dear My, Abby of, yeah. uh, of the session after dark. Yeah. Dear Rapey Eyes. Right, dear Rapey Eyes. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. Um, Cody Anderson says uh, something called the cheese pint. He says, just skip the middleman, drink it straight. Yum. So the old fondue pot. I could do that. Uh, Justin Rankin says, JP's lymph nodes, chicken breast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Chicken breast dipped in Justin's famous smoked mozzarella fondue <sighs> with a side of Bevo's, <laughs> something called Bevo's butter biscuits. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what Bevo's butter biscuits I don't know what that would means. be. I, Are the, is that her rear end? Uh, is that uh, her. Who knows? Okay. It's up to the imagination. So right? regardless, lymph nodes? Blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you lost me at yeah, lymph no, nodes. No, thanks. No, that was, apparently Justin has some famous smoke. I don't know. Okay. Smoke mozzarella? Why not? Something? I don't know. Uh, Blobber Glop <laughs> says uh, something called the lunch meat, and he wants me to read this in a homoerotic voice, <clears throat> but I what? don't know how to do that. Yeah. Sure. Um, everyone's meat touching in a giant streaming container. Everyone's meat oh! touching in a giant streaming container, but boil of moist wine broth. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right, All right. yeah. I don't know if I could ever look at Jeremy in the same way ever again. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I'm glad yeah. we ended on the Belgian Golden Strong. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Belgian don't Golden worry. Shower? Don't worry. Rapey eyes will still look at him the same way. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Uh, Douglas Nelson says uh, something called Bevo's Lactation Creation. Oh, gross. Oh. That. You're disgusting. <laughs> I'd order double and then take <laughs> some home because I can't eat it all because I'm trying to watch my weight. And in a related story, I haven't lactated in like two and a half years, creepers. <laughs> always, always time for that. Well, there's curdled Bevo there. Isn't your kid oh, 10 years old? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, that's not you. Sorry. Um, John A. Cheese, says, uh, well, obviously the most popular dish is the boner chicken. Oh. Ooh. Um, right. And always. then uh, Louis Brewing says uh, something called the Moscow. However, they always forget to bring the beers, yet you're charged for them. <laughs> <laughs> to, I'm, I'm slow. Uh, I, I don't, I don't quite get that. <laughs> All right. Um, I remember Phil, something about beer and musk. <laughs> Phil Howard says, uh, boner chicken, the dip it and lick it edition. Ew. Because it's fondue. I don't know. Okay. And then last, uh-huh. uh, but finally least, William, uh, something called micro wieners cooked in wacka wacka sauce. <laughs> Winner. Winner, you go. Uh, my two favorites are CPR. Yeah. I think it's yeah. simple yet effective. That's yeah. that's the top of my list. Number two yeah. is Bevo's lactation. What's that's it? What was creation? the whole thing? Uh, I'd go CPR. <laughs> CPR. Yeah. Uh, I like CPR. All right, Jeremy. There you go. Winner, winner, winner. Yeah, Chicken dinner. Yeah. I don't know if I can eat cheese again. <laughs> right. I can. Cheese <laughs> And don't stop. forget, our Twitter game is brought to you by uh, the cure? Wine and Hop Shop. You can go to wineandhop.com and check them out right now. Uh, well done, JP. Another great Twitter game. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. It means just as much as the last time you told me. <laughs> <laughs> another stellar job, yeah. JP. Wow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that lobotomy did you good. He's going to go home and tell Taryn all about it. Yeah. Taryn, I got some positive feedback. It was amazing. <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm going to do the Kaminsky show with you next week or not. On one <laughs> hand, I want to because yeah. I like Colin. Yeah. On the other hand, I don't want to because Colin. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of beer science. It's so sciencey. Yeah. And oh. you know, I have to pretend to be interested yeah, for a long is, uh, time. Right. That sounds like work. That sounds like, like work. This was fun. I mean, it'll be great for our listeners, which is why I feel like... Now, you know, he's got his own sort of radio show now up in the... I know, uh, he does. Oh, really? I think he's probably over being boring. I don't mean that he's he's boring <laughs> to, to, to wow, me. Wow, to me too, Teddy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think he'll, yeah. he'll get it down to the level. He knows who, who we're You think so? I think so. He can dumb it down for us. I don't know. We'll make it. I'll make it. I'll, we're make pretty it dumb. All right. Can All we right. go to the bathroom now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. We'll see you next week with the great mad scientist Colin Kaminsky. JP, take us out of here. Thanks, Eagle Rock. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our show sponsor, More Beer. You can get absolutely everything you need to make great beer at home by going to morebeer.com. Jeremy, Lee, and Eric from the world-famous Eagle Rock Brewing Company place in L.A. came up to chat beer and nicknames. Learn more about their beers at eaglerockbrewery.com. Merge your love of Disneyland with your lack of engaging podcast and go to earsuppodcast.com as JP, Terrence, Bevo, and Taryn talk about all things Disney. 
Go check out Moscow's Hop Cartoons over at hoplifestore.com. Get on Twitter for some good beer insight and homebrew info, and follow Nate Smith at Nathan Homebrew and Mike McDowell at TC McD. Also, Warren is adding to the noise over at Another Beardy. Today's show was produced by someone I'm still not exactly sure, but we'll find out at some point. Maybe. I don't really know. It depends on what we have to do tomorrow. JP was hungry. Bevo was definitely not lactating. And your host was Justin Crossley. Be sure to find the Brewing Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. JP's an asshole. Justin's a nice guy. And winning the race, JP does.